hard rock riffs, pyrotechnics, and so much skin. Hey y'all, I'm Abria Iyengar, and I am so stoked to welcome you to the Chaos Carnival, our D&D actual play with your favorite WWE wrestlers. We'll meet them in a second, but first, I wanna tell you about the whole thing that we're doing here. So for this game and for the whole D&D Live event, we're gonna be raising money for the V Foundation and Connor's Cure, a charity that fights pediatric cancer. So it's a special charity to the WWE and to their whole community. So be sure to click the link in the chat and donate now or anytime during D&D Live. With all of that said, I think we're ready to go. Let's meet our wrestlers. <laughs> All right. It was great. It was Let's great. Let's play some D&D, we'll baby. We'll get the checkers. You know, it'll be fun. Oh, oh, hey, guys. How's it going? Ready to play D&D? What's up? Oh, it's just me, WWE Superstar Xavier Woods, a.k.a. Austin Creed, a.k.a. host of the greatest YouTube channel of all time, Up, Up, Down, Down. Check it out anywhere. And G4 host, baby, G4, at G4 on all social platforms. I am ready to play D&D with some of my fantastic friends. Let's go. Also, go to UDD Shop for all your Up, Up, Down, Down merchandise paraphernalia needs. Nailed it. Who are you playing? I, oh yeah, that's that's relevant. <laughs> Who's your character? So I'm what? playing Donnie, a tortle, a traveler. He's about four, six, 450 pounds. His BMI is absolutely out of control, but it's supposed to be. <laughs> so Donnie, I'm here, what's up? Excellent. Next up? Next up, 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 down, down, star. Longest left, right, left, right. Former champion, Prince Pretty. My name is very specific. There's an H there for a reason. It is, just like I'm holding over here. Quata. Quata. Oh, it has to be said oh. correctly. Say it, say it correctly. Oh, boy. Um, but yes, but uh, I'm, uh, yeah, no, no, no. Water. Say it correctly. Water. <laughs> say it correctly. Water. Water. Uh, water. 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 Guys, <laughs> focus. <laughs> water. I'm a CL. Uh, imagine Legolas, but take away all the good qualities. That's me. Oh. I'm lacking courage. Okay. If you're expecting good things, you're looking in the wrong direction. I look forward to murdering this character immediately. Next up. Up next is me. I am WWE superstar Mace, uh, but you can call me by my government name, Brennan. And um, I'm <laughs> repping the lefty, like, the lefty, righty, lefty, righty. So instead of buying an up, up, down, down shirt, go to the same exact site and purchase an esports jersey for my team, the better team. As long oh, as Daddy gets his money, I can vote you want. <laughs> you can yeah, get your money, Daddy. You can get your money, Daddy. I will be playing uh, Stick. Uh, I'm a dem peer, and I'm Stick because we I'm kind of like that kind of wait, language here. What? Stick. <laughs> Oh, and damn, I can't say damn beer. <laughs> I say beer. I'm kind of like Blade, except for I'm a druid, so I can't use a blade, so I'm stick. Um, you know, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much exactly like Wesley Snipes, except for taller and cooler with longer hair Amazing. and sticks. Bring us home. I am Ember Moon, <laughs> everyone's favorite loser on Up, Up, Down, Down. No. I'm gonna win one eventually. Not really, maybe, but I'm here. But I semi-pro play D&D in my spare time, all the time. But today I'm playing Janae, the point. That'll make her. It's going to be fun because I'm Janae. 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 Yes. That is, if this doesn't happen at least like 12 times this adventure, you're losing out on a great opportunity. That's on you. That's not on me. I've never been funny a day in my life, and I will not start here. Why don't we get into the game, y'all? I do want to say a couple things up top before we, like, break into the world and start telling this amazing story of the Chaos Carnival. Uh, two things. One, all four of you are going to start with a use of inspiration. So at some point, if a d20 roll breaks incredibly badly for you, you have a gift from me as your loving DM who wants nothing more than chaos, so you get a free reroll. You're welcome. Nice. And if you make me laugh, I'll give you more. I'm easy to please. Okay. I am a merciful god. Oh. Now on top of that, 
uh, hourglasses are big and the Fae have numbers that they enjoy more than others. Three and eight. So we're gonna play Eights Are Wild today. Does that make sense? Any questions? Eights are wild. Yes, man. Let's Eights go. Eights are wild, baby. So the traveling extravaganza known as the Witchlight Carnival visits this place, your home plane of existence, once every eight years. You have a dim memory of sneaking into the carnival as a child without paying for a ticket. That memory has grown foggy over time, though it still conjures a weird mixture of emotions, wonder and awe and joy mixed with loss and regret. During this childhood visit, each of you lost something. You tried to find it, but the carnival owners, a pair of Shatterkai elves named Mr. Witch and Mr. Light, were decidedly unhelpful. You remember the cruelty in their rhyme. Silly little screeching cricket, said Witch. You forgot to buy a ticket. The carnival goes round and round, said Light. The multiverse is our playground. Nothing's free and nothing's lost. Every visit has a cost. As time passed, your hearts became less heavy and you gave less and less thought to those childhood events. But now, for some reason, you can't quite explain the longing to retrieve that thing you lost so long ago has resurfaced almost as if an old spell has broken and brought all of those memories and feelings back to the forefront. The Witchlight Carnival has returned and you find yourself standing near a ticket booth by the entrance at twilight, just as the carnival is about to open. There you see three others who look just as troubled and confused and ready as you do. Without knowing how or why, you sense that all of you, each of you, has something that they've lost as well. Perhaps fate has brought you here. Donnie, you stand at the sort of misty edge of the carnival, blue sky darkening into purple with these gorgeous gold orange lights sort of drawing you in and bringing, you can hear the sounds of merriment and shouting and laughter in front of you and you look down, you don't remember walking up, but you see a ticket in your hand. Donnie, what do you look like in this moment and what did you lose? I'm about five, six, 450 pounds. I look like what uh, we would know as a turtle, but just very large. My shell <laughs> is greenish, brownish, blackish. I got a couple of scrapes on it. You can tell that I've been around. I've traveled quite a bit and you can tell that just from the shell. But other than that, I've got a gleam in my eye and I'm feeling like I'm gonna find what I lost. What did you lose? I lost my toy van. So when I was but a young child, I had a toy van and inside this van, there was a tiny motorcycle that shot rockets, windshield wipers on it. It had a green top, tan sides. It was a huge van, tons of stuff could fit in there. And when I went to this, I went to this carnival, I guess I misplaced it or someone took it, I don't know, but I have to find it. So you walked in with your treasured childhood toy, but you walked out with something else instead. Roll a D100 for me. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 14? 14, yes. Okay. You walked out with just a tiny, plain, but like bright and shiny and well-polished Electrum whistle. And every time you blow into it, you don't hear anything. And for as long as you've had it, you've never met anyone that could hear it but something told you to bring it with you again when you came back, so you've got it on you. Let's go ahead and add that to your inventory. Jenny, same thing. You stand here at the crossroads, an entrance to some place both familiar and incredibly strange. What do you look like? And what did you lose? I'm a short, tiny little dwarf, but I'm real stout and muscular. Like, I'm probably way too muscular to be like this tiny and I got a big great sword on my back. I might be overcompensating, but I'm Jin A. <laughs> you know, I do what I want. Um, I have an odor about me that just smells like death. Uh, That's one inspiration. Much. 
<laughs> She's already got it. <laughs> I got an odor about me that like will make most people turn away and not talk to me. Um, I'm also covered in just gore and blood, but I have a butcher's bib on. That makes it, that makes it worse. That makes it worse. Yeah, it is just, it's just, I'm very dirty. I'm very dirty. I've been through a lot or maybe have I, I don't know. I like to have fun with stuff, but I'm sitting here trying to remember what I lost and then it finally hit me. I, I lost a little handmade doll. My mom made me of my hero, the point. Who is the point? The point is the most famous battle rager of all time. Oh. And it's someone that I look up to and I've just wanted to be like him my entire life. He has saved the king. He has saved dwarven kind. And like, that's why I became a battle rager. I got my spiky armor on and I'm just ready to crush stuff like my hero would. I love it. Okay, so you walked in with this uh, doll, an action figure, if you will, but you walked out with something else. Roll a D100 for me. 95. Okay. Uh, with a 95, you walked out with this like long, thin, sort of whippy bit of metal. And you don't really know what it does. It's kind of vaguely wand shaped. The only thing you understand about it is that it's just, it's a little magnetic. Like you can kind of pick up some stuff with it, but it's not incredibly strong and you're not sure what it does yet. Can I stick it to my armor? Of course you can. Ridiculous. Yeah. It's just, you have I'll like a it, bloody... I'll, like, <laughs> I'll stick it like under the bib with the spiked armor popping out, but I'll find like a nice little like kind of corner where it's not going to get detached. Quata, which is the only time I'm going to ever say it right. So please enjoy that <laughs> gift. My sea elven friend, what do you look like and what did you lose? To fully paint the picture, the life of Quata, I have to take okay. you back to when he was a young child with his twin brother. He wasn't called Huata. His name was actually Wegalus. <laughs> it's and his twin brother, worse thing. <laughs> his twin brother, Legolas, we decided uh. one day to go to the carnival. As you clearly know, my former brother, you know about him. You know what he's done. You know how he is. I yes. do not. Oh. He's a, well, he's very popular. Google him, Legolas. You'll, you'll see all you need to see. But we went to the carnival, we went to the fair. And what I lost was a piece of my body. I lost my big toe. <laughs> which, as you know, if you know the human anatomy at all, is a huge thing with balance. As the years progressed, I could barely walk in a straight line. Meanwhile, Legolas, he's got his bow and arrow. He's floating down on shields, surfing, and just sniping people off. I can barely walk around. So what do I do? Because he's stealing all the thunder? Mm. Well, I turn towards something that takes that out of the equation. Water. Mm. So I jump into water <laughs> where balance doesn't quite fit the equation. So you lost your big toe. But what did you gain in return? Please roll a D100 for me. This is so much, I gotta put my glasses on. I wrote down none of that backstory, by the way. 62. I 62. <laughs> you, a tiny, adorable little elf, kind of limping in that you somehow misplaced your big toe. You come out instead with like this tinted glass monocle that makes everything, even though it's perfectly clear, it colors everything in this like very bizarre green tinge whenever you look through it. And it feels vaguely magical, but you're not quite sure how or what its intended purpose is, but you have it and you brought it with you today. And finally, Stick, you stand here. Three other people, yep, let's get the glasses on, that's the important thing. You stand here wearing sunglasses. I don't like light. Tell us what you look like and what did you lose here as a child? Stick marches over here with a purpose, like a man on a mission. It's almost like he's walking in slow motion, fully focused on the carnival in front of him. And it's you, you can almost imagine the techno music blaring at the vampire rave that he's coming from. <laughs> and uh, compared to all these dwarves, no offense, Ember, uh, <laughs> he stands at a tall it's six Jenny. foot three. Janae. 
Jenny. <laughs> stands at a tall six foot three, uh, like ripped to shreds, the coolest dude you'd ever seen. He's even got these rare uh, tinted spectacles. He's adorned with black scale armor that kind of like fits him like a trench coat that flows as he walks. And he yeah. walks up, he remembers this carnival. When he was a boy, this is where he was cursed. This is where he lost his heart. <gasps> oh, you lost your heart here. His whole, his whole heart, yeah. But what did you gain? Yeah. Roll a D100 for me. <laughs> the kid, <see? laughs> <laughs> 44. You walked out as a small child, kind of clutching your hand over your chest. You know that something was different, something was removed. You feel the ache of it. And as you kind of pull your hands away, you realize you were holding this tiny pumpkin shaped cauldron ca carved out of bog oak. And it's sturdy and smooth, incredibly finely uh, carved, but it is not your heart, but you carry it with you nonetheless. And now the four of you stand here outside of the carnival. You see each other, regard your mutual purposes. What do you want to do? What's up? Hey guys, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm uh... Donnie. Can y'all hear this whistle? I blow the whistle. Uh, none of, like, the other three of you don't hear anything, but I need you to make a perception check for me, Donnie. And 16. Perfect. Uh, you clock it right away that within about everyone inside the carnival that looks like they work there, that are wearing, like, these brightly colored, sort of, like, sateen, costumey outfits, you see them all almost freeze and wince and look around before they continue moving. Your whistle's no, broken. Right you guys? Back. You should get a new did, whistle. Uh, Stick, you with guys... your passive perception, you noticed that too. Ah, yeah. Through your cool sunglasses. I noticed sunglasses. made everybody else go like this. Yeah, well, I something. Think you guys are broken too, along with that whistle. That's all I gotta say. So what are you? I'm Gen A. What, what are you guys doing here? Yeah, I'm Gen just a? looking through my. I'm looking through my monocle. I just wanna. I just wanna see what we can see. Okay. And see and see if I can see cool anything special. Quata, what are you looking for specifically? Believe it or not, I don't like standing. I need some water. I need to get to water. <laughs> so I am specifically looking for a pool, a barrel of water, uh, a river, anything, anything that I can jump in, because my my foot is killing. With that sort of like stated intention as you feel the pain in your foot and your mind immediately flashes to pools of water, a couple things get brighter, glowing uh, green, almost as if you were wearing like night, a night vision uh, monocle. You see that like 150 yards inward, there's this massive, almost fishbowl looking tank with a merfolk swimming around in it. You see that like farther off in the distance in a couple directions that there are like bodies of water, like small little ponds, decorative, one of them with a bunch of like little boats and you can see people in the distance laughing and kind of doing that little paddle boat game off. So you can see that there are several places where you could access bodies of water. And even down to like the urge, you can see that lots of people are carrying around like cups and glasses and snacks and concessions. And just a few of them, maybe one in every like six or seven, you can see the liquid, the liquid within, people that are drinking water. Any water here in a body is, a, is apparent to you. I want to take off running towards those mer people. I'm going to fall down a bunch because I can't really run at all. Vice. But eventually, I'm going to make it uh, towards that. That's where I'm headed, guys. The sea elf that I don't think introduced himself to you takes off. Not at all. Into the carnival. Oh, okay. I, I'm do? scared. I'm tiny. I don't like <laughs> He's gone. Oh, pal. Oh, look at well, him fall. Uh, it's even, so funny. Look yeah. at him. I don't even know that Look guy. at him, he's wobbling. <laughs> Maybe he's, because I, like... I, I, I'm looking for something here. Maybe he's looking for something. Are you guys looking for something? Or are you guys just solo are dolo? You, you're looking for something, the carnival? too? Like, what's, yeah. I'm looking for a doll. Well, action figure. Your doll? Action figure is more appropriate term. You know what I'm saying? You know, just because I'm a girl doesn't yeah. mean I play with dolls. 
I can play with action Guys, figures. Just want to put that I out there. I keep falling uh, down I, okay. on the way to this water. Can someone help me, please? <laughs> I just... Big boy, big over my boy with the Bret Hart glasses. Can you scoop me up and toss me in this pool, please? <laughs> He's only like 25 just, feet from you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I haven't made it far. Yeah. And as you can see, I'm not a good runner. So, Jen A, you, come on, give me a hand here. I, what is, wanna, anyway, I what is your name? I want to walk to the sea elf and be like, all right, Who buddy, you? you gotta take it slow. You gotta, you gotta walk before you run. You can't just go through That's all willy nilly. <laughs> I can't okay. walk. So let's start small, then we go big, baby steps. All right. Put one foot in front of the other, and I start like singing him this song as we like slowly walk. Where where are we going? Cause <laughs> you see, you want to go somewhere. You wanted to go in the fish tank. The the pool with all the mer people in it. I'll have a conversation with them, but I need help getting there. Please. Yeah, the fish tank. Oh. Well, so nice to meet you, sir. What is your name? name I am Donnie. Quata. Nice to meet you. Your name I'm Quata. Water. Your name is Water. Wa no, water. no. There's an that's... H in it. Wa Guys, this is why I don't talk to water? many people. Huh? That's, that's this is why I don't talk name. to many people. My name is so Quata. Water? Is that is that Water. Thing? Nice to meet you, Water. Do you pronounce it do you pronounce it water? If you guys need me, I'm water. slowly crawling my way because you've insulted me and are now just refusing to help. As you crawl on the ground, Water, uh, you kind of bump into a, a, a leg and a foot and you look down and you see that it is incredibly like animalistic and you look up and there is a a rabbit folk person mm. in like a little dark suit looking down at you, very confused. He's got white fur that goes uh, black at the ears and at his nose and at like his extremities. And he leans down to try to like help you up. Uh, oh yeah. Are you okay? Do you, um, why are you crawling? Let, let me ask you this. Yeah. Does he have, does he have two big bunny teeth? Uh, he gives a little nervous smirk, and yeah, you see two little bunny teeth. Can you can you hide the teeth? Can you just hide them as we talk? Like, just keep your mouth <laughs> closed. Okay. And, okay. Uh, if you can give me a hand I, to that water, we're good. All right. And yeah. Thank you, sir. Trying to speak out of the side of his mouth, he has no idea why, but uh, he very helpful. Very helpful. Helps Thank you, you out. I walk. I, I, I walk up and I see this this fine bunny man helping him and I say, excuse my friend, he's so rude. He didn't answer your question, didn't introduce himself. I'll, I'll help him get to the water. And I pick him up over my head because I'm real strong and I just I just throw him into the tank. <laughs> I'm, I'm over it, I'm sick of it. I pick him up, I throw him into the tank. Are you happy Amazing. now? Amazing. You see that this little like rabbit man goes, oh, thank, thank you, oh, no, 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 no. As you launch Quata, into like this beautiful, pristine, like uh, Art Nouveau sort of uh, fishbowl with a single beautiful merfolk woman, a mermaid. And she, you hear her scream as another person is deposited into her space. And she like wraps around you and is going to attempt to uh, squeeze you to death, Quata? So what would you God, like to do to like oppose that? God, yeah. Guys, guys, can I please? Okay, <laughs> can so we I still pan don't over? know who you are. Yeah. Can we pan back over to Jenny that has now picked up like a old container of popcorn or something that like has yeah. been like on the ground. We shoveled it back in and I'm like, this is a great show. Like, this is <laughs> stick, I just stick, wanna, stick is just sharing, stick. is sharing the popcorn with Jenny ah. and she, he's dipping it in the blood on her apron. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this bunny folk kind of looks over at you. Get squeezed? Yeah. Yes, they I are. I don't even know you. <laughs> How about the bunny gentleman? Can he? Can he? Can you lend a hand, please? Um, it's getting hard. It's getting hard to breathe here. He kind of screamed and then looks over at the two of you and seems to have like an object permanence problem. Of the moment he's no longer looking at you, he's suddenly uh, kind of focused on Stick and Jenny. And he goes. Do you want me to get you, I can get you fresh popcorn um, that hasn't been on the ground, if that's what you need. This, no, it's fine. You just rub some dirt on, you want, like, and so I follow uh, Stick, Stick, it, like, his lead, 
and I like wipe it on my chest and then offer the bunny some popcorn. It's way better this way. There's Great. nothing gro- wrong nothing with ground wrong. popcorn. Kind of tenuously reaches a hand out and tries a piece. Uh, and and uh, you watch him just cringe, but he swallows good, it. it? <laughs> yes, I, I suppose. Uh, my name is Gorby. Nice. Gorby, Gorby. nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You can see that we're all from different places with different cultures and different rules and personal space and things like that. Uh, if, if you wouldn't mind, I, I'm looking for a toy van. I was wondering, have you maybe seen one around here? I lost it Wait years ago, but you guys, you guys seem like a toys. traveling. Well, I, I lost Something that's very important like, to me. an action figure, not a toy. It's very important to me. And like, Gorby looks... My mother... Uh, Gorby looks super concerned about all of this, but we're going to smash cut back to uh, Wada actively being murked right now. (laughs) Gorby, (laughs) I'm about to lose my life. Please help. Are you still yelling out the tank and not interacting with this in front of you? I'm getting wrapped up, but I'm looking over at the people who are enjoying me dying. They're having a whole moment right now. I need you to make a strength saving throw as she tries to grapple and crush you. Talk to her. You need to beat a fish. 13. I got a two. <laughs> a two? Two. I now oh. offer popcorn to Donnie. She wraps so. her lower uh, body around you. It's this beautiful, almost beta fish, like extremely long, like fish body. It's beautiful. And it is surrounding you and squeezing you. And you feel that pressure. And then you feel maybe a little crunch as you take five points of bludgeoning damage. Oh, no. Do you like, would you like to continue yelling? I wanna, I wanna talk to her. What do you I wanna say talk to her. as you turn and meet her <laughs> face? And she is beautiful, high cheekbones, dark eyes that like once again are reflecting that light in here. And her face is pulled back in this terrible like rictus of fury and audacity as she reaches in with her hands to try to start choking you. What do you wanna say? I want to say, hold on, please don't choke me. My name is Quanta. <laughs> I can't walk on land. I'm much more Why comfortable in the water. Why are you in water. my tank? Be- get I, out! I, 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 I will get out if you let me go, please. Make a persuasion check. <laughs> Guys, you really not helping me. <laughs> you wanted to help off the jump. A 16? 16. So she gets her hands and then she kind of puts them on your shoulder and you feel her nails like press in just a little bit. And then you feel her like lower body like release. And she like swims back to the edge of her tank. You're in this space, like this thing has maybe a 12 foot diameter. It's, it's close quarters. And she takes up a lot of the room in here cause it was built just for her. And she presses herself up to the edge of it and then just gives you a look, go. Yeah, I'm gonna slowly pull myself out of here just flop right like just outside of it as soon as he lands on the metal i give him Uh, applause say how's the water water (laughs) guys i don't know why you let that happen (laughs) you literally asked us to put you in the tank tank. i wanted help which none of you helped me and then as i was getting squeezed you Look, didn't help you there either you can't just be going and changing your mind all willy-nilly and stuff like look at her like all right, guys. You know, all right, I let's thought start you up. were trying to make a new friend. All right, I didn't let's, know. What you really, really guys to, to you, would ma'am. not be his friend. He he needs to be in water. Well, friend, I say friend. He barely introduced himself to us earlier. We we're just trying to get him something know. that he needed. So we apologize for intruding on your space. I don't know if it's different here where you are, but where we're from, asking first is an integral part of transactions. This Don't is true. just this yeet is true. elves into people's bowls. Some cultures do that, but I, I understand. I understand. <laughs> I apologize. I, I, I might have, I, I, I didn't get a chance to ask if I could go in the pool, because mm-hmm. as you did see, I was thrown into the pool. I but didn't see, I wasn't would. paying attention to you. I was preparing sorry. for my performance. Okay, oh, sorry, what, sorry. What, what do you do? Ooh. You see uh, her eyes narrow and she gets like really stiff for a fish. And then she just vaguely gestures to like the sign beside the bowl that is uh, Palasha, the siren of the seas. 
Ah. And you see her mm. like singing and like it's this beautifully oh. painted like watercolor of her singing and like little spirals of water are like dancing through and out the bowl. Ma'am, we were just enamored <laughs> by your siren song. So really, really, we're just playing into it. Make a deception check. <laughs> <laughs> As you see, like, she seems to relax a little bit in that moment. Like, I mean. Guard's going down. Guard's going down. That's an 18. Nice. Well, I guess allowances can be made for fans. Mm, but I, I don't can, perform. Can we get an autograph? Of course. What would you like me to sign? And she like kind of comes up and out of the, the bowl and just rests herself on the top and is just staring at you. you should, could you, you sign my shell? Yeah. Right here on the chest happening. of it, could you sign my shell? Can I be, can I ask, uh, hey, you guys have a lost and found here? Like a bin for lost stuff? Hey, that's that a, a good idea. Is that a, a thing, please? There's a lot of lost things here. It's kind of what we do. And you see she flicks a finger and a little like rivulet of water like comes out of the tank beside her and then immediately goes to like inky blackness as like it moves of its own volition and be she begins to sign like a very fancy like looping script uh, palasha across the top of your shell. She signs it with a little heart at the end. That's pretty cool. Oh, Dry it off so it doesn't smudge. Palasha, uh We've, we've lost a few things. This is, uh, I I feel like when I was a kid, maybe came in here, I don't know, with the three of you guys, I don't know when you guys lost stuff. We lost stuff here and we're, we're here looking for it. Do you think that you might be able to point us in the right direction of where to maybe find things? That's the thing, isn't it? You don't realize where you are. This is a fake carnival. People lose things all the time. I bet you didn't buy a ticket when you came. Did you? Well, I mean, you know, like, define ticket. Like, is is that like... Paying you money know, for entrance. Yeah. Uh, I kind so of feel like I'm just, being unjustly punished. Um, like, there were no doors <laughs> to get into your carnival, so I just kind of walked in, and like, I was young. It was mm -hmm. a different time. There were no doors, so like, it's a free-for-all at that point, right? Right? Am I right? I, I mean, the why did they just lose toys and I lost my entire heart? Oh, that's aggressive. What did you get in return? The Fae only take things that they believe are of equal value. And maybe you didn't value your heart very much as a child. It's a really wow. rash decision to force on a child. I got this pumpkin okay. cup. Okay. If you're here and you brought it, I'm sure you'll figure it out. But you know, you don't have a lot of time the moon is out. You have until midnight. See, there's always a cost. And those tickets, I assume you don't know how you got your tickets this go around, is that correct? It was just in my hand. Mm -hmm. Everything has a cost. There are no free gifts with the Fae. They gave you an opportunity. And if you fail, you will stay. That's mm -hmm. not good. Mm -mm. Question. Should we, uh... I, I, I want to look into the sky. She said the, the moon is there. Is the sun also visible in the sky at this point in the day? No, you like, as you were originally walking up, it was twilight and now like <clears throat> you can see the last sort of golden rays of the sun are slipping away. Oh, thank okay. goodness. It was too bright out here. <laughs> Still um, is. All right. So we only have a few hours, guys. Um, I mean, do you do you want to try to team up and, and find this stuff, or do you guys want to split up and I search mean, for it? I mean, my expertise, I'm just saying, the more the merrier, you know, so I can show off how awesome I can be. You know what I'm saying? More people. No, I don't. Yeah. I work alone, sure. but I'll work alone together, just this once. I like. <laughs> All right, and I like this guy. Stick my dude right here. Sorry for throwing you. Clearly, I need some help here, guys. So I'm, I'm yeah. in. Do we want to get you a cup, All for one. a cup of some sort with some water in it? Will that help? I wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't mind that. Okay. At least to dip my finger okay. in or something. I literally am a siren of water. Just make co eye contact and make a request. Oh, God. But there's a I price for the transaction. She just said. Though. Like, she just said nothing's that. Nothing's free. That's right. She yeah. said it twice, actually. 
I'm gonna like, look at my friends. Sure I'm gonna look at my friends. Dude. What do you guys think? Should I talk to I her? I think do it. Yeah, hey, she's awesome, uh, dude. Uh, uh, <laughs> just sign my chest. Y'all didn't hear her say the stuff about there's transactions and stuff and everything costs something. Y'all didn't. Am I the only one that yeah. heard that two times? No, Jenny, because if it's something that he needs to live, then he'll get something in return that is equal of equal value, right? Like, could we not just steal it from like I don't know anywhere? Stealing I don't want to steal something. anything. Oh, found it. That's yeah. Oh. See, I don't want to steal anything. Well, I mean, we could ask. Want... We could ask. Jenny and Wada, just... I need you both to make perception checks for me. Oh boy. Oh, no. Donnie mm -hmm. and Sticks passives will cover this. We're wise. Seventeen. Mm -hmm. Nailed it. Eighteen. Oh, great. Oh. You all catch it, even in the midst of Jenny like trying to warn the group off from whatever Faye transaction is about to transpire. You all see it. A figure in shadows, a little bit back and behind, slinking into the darkness uh, behind Palasha's sign. And you see feathered dark fingers reaching out and a spell beginning to be cast. Is there anything you want to do hey. before this happens? Hey, Let's my follow man. that guy. This woman, thing. <laughs> I, can I grab the hand? Uh, they're probably about 10 feet away from you. So you would have to move over to try to intercept. Excuse me. Lunge and grab the like, hand? Yeah, I'll reach over, grab the hand, and be like, excuse me. <laughs> uh, go ahead you? and give me, just give me an unarmed strike attack roll to see God. if you can pull this off. To grapple? Just, you just grab yeah, and feathered hands? Kinda, you, I don't know. Grab 24, yeah. baby. Oh Let's my goodness. go. Jeez. You reach Holy out shit. and snatch this feathery hand, and you actually see the like dark black, uh, navy blue black uh, energy being like created around it gets snuffed out the moment you mess with like the oh. finger component of the spell as a kinku in like dark purple robes kind of looks back at you shocked and startled and looks back and forth between you and uh palasha's big tank and i and i want to pull it out and set it in the middle and be like who is you well put who you who who you? I ask first, but I see how this is gonna go. We gotta get the trust thing going here. I I'm go. Janae. You no. And you stay. He's trying to pull back and away from you. <laughs> Look, you asked me who I was, and then you want to run off before I give you an answer. I want to run off. I want stick, to know stick why. Stick, you wanna hold him too, or? What? Uh. Yeah. I can hold him. Like, why you blasty blast us or Not. her? Or Palacia. Palacia, like, looks Palacia, over. Palacia, do you by chance know um, who this is or what he was doing? It seemed like you may have been casting some sort of spell. I don't know him. And you see she, like, flicks her hand out and a little whip of water goes and, like, scratches him. And you see he begins to bleed a little bit under his feathers where she cut him. Oh, that seems extreme. We, we should throw him in there with her. Do it. Birds drown. Do it. Oh. I get him. She'll kill him. She'll kill him. I, I've got him. Well, I'm holding them over just, my head. Well, I'm ask you guys I mean, what do you want to do. Let's hold, hold the door. Here. The Kenku begins to sure. squawk and scream and squirm uh -huh. and is trying to get away. Hold, hold on. If you don't talk Maybe to us, answer, answer this woman's questions or you're going in. We can have this right. is our, too. This is our apology. This is our apology. Would you right. like him in, in the pool with you or do you not want him in the pool with you? We'll do whatever you'd like. So, water. Or like, and I and I gesture to the tank, not the person. Yeah, Water or squawk, your choice. The Kenku is like flipping out and then kind of freezes and makes eye contact with you with these like big, dark eyes that look like there's galaxies behind them and goes squawk, squawk. Set him down. All right. No, don't let him go though. Like you know. Okay. When you put him it. down, he definitely sees he's surrounded and outnumbered and just gets very small and looks up at you. So no, I don't why... want any more trouble, bird. Some so mother feathers who... always want to be climbing uphill. He's so aggressive. <laughs> I, I I know. Um, who are you? He gets really quiet and thoughtful. Kinku are mimics, so he is searching his memory banks for the words to try to give you an answer. And it takes a good 10 seconds before he nods and goes, Kettle steam. I Kettle am a war steam. warlock looking. I need answers. Did you lose something? Yep. Yes. Beat me to it. Perfect. What did you lose? Warlock. 
hatred. Oh, that's a big deal. That's that's so a big So where do you deal. draw your power, bird? Well, like technically, he's already made the deal. From my expertise, you oh, know, because okay. I've killed so many warlocks. You know what I'm saying? The deal's already been made. It's just maybe this warlock can't, you know what we say, level up without his patron. You know what I'm saying? And Kettlestein yeah. gestures to you and nods in the affirmative. You're pretty nailed smart, it. little lady. Just, I, I right, like so, just walk around a victory lap right now because I just nailed it, like so, a friend of the party. So, Kettlesteam, what was it that you were about to do before she grabbed you? Kettlesteam kind of rubs their feathers together. Once again, it takes him a couple seconds to, like, find the old vocabulary to answer. Cause, mischief, make, mm. mister, misters, come. Answer. Explain. Oh. Are oh. they? Were they? Are they? Did, did two you? two people. Two people took the thing from you. I know. They took nice. the thing from me. No. They took the thing from me. Wait. Answers. Oh, because they took. Okay. Cool. It, it's Without the two creepy dudes, right? The like the black and the uh, the 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 uh, the witch. Mister oh, Witch. Mister yep. White. Light. Oh, Mister Witch and White. There it is. There it is. Did you lose Where? this when you were young? Yes. And you said mischief will make them come. It could. Ah. Oh, that's that's not that's not a that's uh, not technically. Should we uh, uh, recruit here? Should should we get another member recruit. of the team? Recruit. How about we set uh, the the uh, Mr. Um, uh, Kettle Kettle Stem here off, uh, and he can call his team. Steam. 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 Yep. And Steam. he starts to make a whistle like a like a teapot uh, boiling. Yep. Oh. Yeah. Is that is that kind That's of like this whistle? Than your whistle. Yeah. I blow my yep. whistle again. It's broken. Nothing still. And Kettle Steam looks at you like immediately quirked up. You can hear this. Yes. Bird whistle. Once again, you blew it and a lot of beings here all seem to have noticed and kind of wince at the sound. Palasha Could included. It be? People who are stuck here can hear the whistle, and we're not stuck here yet. But not it sounds like Kettle Steam's not stuck, stuck here yet. yet? Don't say yet. I don't like that. Guys, what are we doing? What are we doing with Kettle Steam? Are we, are we bringing All right. him along? I'd say, I say along. we let him go. Bring, okay, then we'll bring him I think we along. bring him, keep an eye you on know? him. But if Palacia can hear uh, this whistle. Yeah, Palacia is like, heard... she ducked back into the tank and is kind of swimming around a, a little agitated. Make an insight check well, for me. 23. 24. You see that on top of just like the like auditory uh, like anxiety she seems to be swimming off, something about her countenance has changed. She looks more feral. Like she isn't trying to like keep her lips off of her teeth, which are like fangs. She looks more like a piranha in this moment. I got eight on my insight check. Yeah, she looks pissed in the water. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you did great, yes. buddy, and I'm proud yes. of you. It looks like her magic is, is slipping away as I blow this whistle, but it's staying within the confines think, of this tank. No, no, I think I think that's a, a a boom boom, and we need to get out of this area. That's what I think that is. What is a boom you, boom? Yeah. I'm gonna just get on the other side of stick, like so. Stick is in between me and this. Tank, put it in like a you line see a crack and go across. Oh. My, my yep. thick, thick turtle friend, can you give me a hand? Can you, yeah, can, I just need just an arm around off. the head right. kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> give me a ride out of here. You da -da. make your way away, um, and you see that uh, Kettle Steam follows you, but then hesitates and turns, and you see uh, his fingers go into a little shotgun and just <laughs> as he makes a sound that perfectly mimics. Uh, it's not, a, it's like a sling, uh, the stone of a sling hitting a wall ah. as an Eldritch Blast fires off and shatters the entire tank. And you hear now as it all breaks away, the scream of this like furious feral siren fills the air as everything explodes out and freezes in midair. And her churning continues in this like broken place that like hovers and like edges of the water begin to go out to jagged points and freeze over, and it becomes this spiked, dangerous, icy thing. It's shattered, but it's going to get worse if you stay. Let's go! I was going. 
You absolutely well, also, do that. Why that little how, jerk? Why that little jerk? How fast is this happening? Shoot the thing and explode it. Mischief. Yeah, he like makes how, eye how, contact with you after, and he goes, "Could help." <laughs> I want to run in and save her and pull her out of the. Oh God. I'm gonna jump off your back because you were helping me, but I don't wanna go in there. Wata jumps off of your back and you move back towards this like, sort of expl like frozen explosion. Uh, and as you push as, through the glass, oh, go ahead. As I'm running in, I wanna kind of like, be running fast enough so I can run, pick up momentum, slide, and then go inside my shell so that if the things are coming back, I can protect her. As you like <laughs> run through all of this like jaggedy, like broken glass and ice, uh, go ahead and give me a constitution saving throw, but I'll give you advantage because that's a great plan. So 15. That'll do it. You're able to slide in and under. You don't take any damage, but you can hear and feel the scraping of like glass and shards of ice off of your shell as you slide sort of under and you're looking up and you see her just screaming. And based off of that incredibly good insight check from earlier, you look and you can see that somehow, you can see that she's crying. She's frustrated and overwhelmed and something terrible is happening. She's not really the cause of it, but she's lost. She's lost in the sauce inside of it. So what do you want to do? Mm. With my, um... no, that's for hitting people, nope. I mean, you can specify, like, we can make things work. What, do you, what okay. are you trying to do? So these things are coming at us now, yes? Yeah, there's like the bits water of spikes? like, yeah, spikes of like water turning to ice and it's jutting as it like pushes into the ground. So the way, the direction that I came from, I feel like there's a lot behind me. So as I get up, I want to spin. I have a quarter staff. I want to spin that fast enough to block the shards coming at us while with my left hand, I'm like kind of just throwing water on her thinking that she doesn't need to necessarily drink it since she's a mermaid. I'm trying to pour it on her while she's writhing. I love that. Um, what world do I want this to be? Give me, give me an acrobatics check. This feels like a dexterous, a dexterous act. 18 plus six is 24. A with a 24, you're able to like stave off all of this like weird, weird physics-defying movement of like shrapnel around you and you like splash your water skin out and it is a very strange sensation for a mermaid to be splashed with water so she actually like kind of freezes in midair and acknowledges you and kind of looks around and begins to come back to herself do you want to say anything in this moment or do anything else yes come come with me we can help find you water <laughs> Come with me if you want to live. If you want to live. <laughs> oh my gosh. She grabs your hands. And as she like kind of closes around it, you feel that tension in the air, this like arcane surge begins to calm down. And she smiles at you. Her teeth kind of pull back over her teeth. Uh, her lips pull back over her teeth. And she looks a little more humanoid and a little more composed again. And you hear that she begins to hum a little bit. And in that humming, in that very light bard song, the ice begins to melt and the water comes back together in one big glob as she centers herself inside of it. And you're kind of half in, half out of this globule and she like pushes you gently so you're able to continue to breathe air. And she says, I'm incredibly sorry. I, I don't know what came over me. I owe you a debt, and for here, that means quite a deal. But I will stay. And her tail kind of flashes out, and you see that the bits of glass are pushing back in and beginning to reform. And like little white hot lines uh, as the glass begins to solder itself back together. And she says, thank you. If you call, I will help as best I can. And she looks over at you, Wata, and sends one slow, like a snake slithering across the ground, like river of water to you. You now have like a three by three foot cube of water that you can control. What do you want to do with it? Is it it's like a saw, it's like, it's just like a nice cube shape. Right now, it, right now it's in like a swirling like circle. It's like just a really big drop of water. Mm. So, but you realize the moment you kind of reach out for it, you can grab it with this arcane sense and pull it to you and you can control its shape. Ooh. And she looks at you and gives a little nod. I can control this, this mm -hmm. cube and this water you say. I can't, so I, that's what I said. Can, can I also disperse it so it is not a cube anymore? Yes, 
what and I, and I still it? control it. Yeah. I'd like to just put it over my entire body. <laughs> as you so, I, uh, so I'm it. wearing it almost as a water suit. You are now wearing, I'm a gonna say suit. like an inch and a half, no, maybe just an inch, an inch water suit across your entire body. That's all I need. Oh, fantastic, thank you so much. <gasps> thank you so much. Oh, that, that water suit looks insane. Were you able to morph the water into a big toe? <laughs> yep, to your balance that's kind of what I was thinking. With that water, yeah, you probably should have used it as a big toe. Or, I mean, I feel like it, guys, he's, got, he's got enough to also have the suit and the big toe. I, I think mean, so. Maybe, maybe I think I think there's enough to cover body. my body. If I have to take a little bit from like the lower leg region to just focus it on my toe, then I'm gonna do that. Hey man, I have a stick if you need it. Hey, thanks man. Set up. Uh, <laughs> I don't. No, I, I don't I, need I it now need though. It. I got a lot of sticks. I got a water toe. I got a water toe. You keep your stick for now. Okay. All right, let's. That, that worked out. So, uh, Kettle Stem, you keep making mischief. Kettle you stem. guys want to find this stuff? Kettle Stem. I think so. You keep making mischief. We'll keep cleaning it up. Eventually, we'll find our stuff, right? Is, I don't. I don't like, like that a, plan uh, at all. Is there like a big, um, like canopy topped piece of the carnival, like the big house? I I don't know what you call them. Yeah, it's the big, big top. top. The big yeah, top. Big, you nailed it. Big, big top. top. Yeah. There is definitely. I don't know why I thought I had that wrong. <laughs> In my head, it came out as like not right. And you, gotta like, ah, you gotta trust your heart. You gotta trust your heart. Let's go to the big, the big place. That's that's probably where the most stuff gets lost, and we can find stuff there. I mean, it's big if enough I were to the hide boss, a heart. That's where I'd hide out. It's a big place where we can find a lot of stuff. So I feel like that's probably where we need to start. Go there. I'm in. Kelsey nods excitedly, and you can see off in the distance, like a massive, like very stereotypical red and white, vertically striped, like majestic big top in the distance. Mm. You see like little glowing orbs of orange light that are just sort of drifting on top of it. And uh, very strangely, an equal in and outflow of people, uh, patrons, moving through the tent. And yeah, Kettle Steam's gonna turn and like sprint in that direction. Ooh, He's very race excited. You there. I start I start trying to keep up with my leg, like dwarven legs just running, but I, right. I, my movement's 35 walking. So. I'm, I'm gonna but walk I'm pretty fast, fast for, cool people don't for run. A squat guy. Uh, go ahead and make me, we can make a, let's do a, a race roll. Uh, go ahead yeah. and roll acrobatics or athletics, your choice. And we'll see who gets to the big top first. You all know where you're headed. Let's go. Kettle Steam got a three. 19. 23. Dang. I got a one, but I'm walking. <laughs> <laughs> you chose this. So you are cash money just, somehow you're walking in slow-mo again, even though everyone else in the group is at full speed. So it is extra slow. And yeah. Kettle Steam, who like tripped immediately and like hit the ground, like looks at you and feels less bad at how bad a job he was doing because he's still moving like <laughs> twice your speed. And I think that's Jenny getting to the big top first, correct? Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. As you rush up, tight. <laughs> as you rush up and you're standing in like the like opening of this big tent, you see and hear like a single like <whistles> as a, a single big beautiful blue firework goes off in the sky. Time is passing. Oh, light. It's nice. <laughs> this is good. So this, go. you think it's a full firework show? Just, We're going in. Yeah, I do my walk in. Let's go. All right. Like this is you walk in and you see once again, there's an equal number of people like filling in the stadium seating around and exiting. It's hard to tell if a show is about to begin or if one just ended. And in the center of this like massive three ring circus tent, you see a single clown pushing a broom kind of putting the dirt back uh, and laying things down and reorganizing, either before or immediately after a performance. What do you want to do? I immediately start scooping up popcorn and candy off the floor. Disgusting. And, yep. <laughs> and then I will find us, like, the, the front row bench and wait, motion everyone to come over. I got snacks! All right, I, you I all think, see I, Jenny. I think by now I'm actually catching up. 
Yeah, you're just <laughs> yeah. now getting inside. Like, Kettle Steam keeps running back and forth to you and then back into the tent and then back over to you and then back to the tent. I'm gonna I'm gonna scan the tent real quick with my mom and see if that? I see anything. What are you looking for? I'm 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 looking for you said there's a lot of people there, right? Yep. I'm looking for two people in particular. Uh -huh. Are they mm. are they in this tent? Are you look are you, so you're looking for those two elves that own Which and White. Uh, it's light. I've been saying it wrong the whole oh, light. time. Light. Witch Witch and and light. Light. Oh. Like the name of the carnival, the witch light. Yes. So that's on oh. me. Pronunciation is hard and words are bad and I don't do them. Uh, it's coming from Huata, so I understand. Huata. I just love W <laughs> so much now. Yeah, uh, so you look and you scan and you don't see them in the crowd, but you see two sort of fuzzy points of green light back and away through the almost gossamer thin flaps of the tents, back and away. That there is clearly some something some part of the carnival that's on the other side of this, that they are down and deep in that direction. Okay. As Huata is looking, I'm explaining to uh, to everyone else that I'm gonna hide somewhere and blow this whistle, because if we're the only ones who don't hear the whistle, then I feel like that might make us stick out, like sore thumbs, so pretend you hear this whistle, but let's look around and see if everybody here hears the whistle. You want us to sell I the whistle? I yeah. intently yeah, focus sell the whistle. on Donnie during this okay. entire time. All right. So, hand over my mouth, uh -huh. and I blow the whistle as discreetly as possible. <laughs> you blow the whistle uh, as discreetly as possible. What is that noise? And what happened? <laughs> Who did that? Ah! A nightmare. Uh, You're all <laughs> truly terrible. Uh, I hate it with my entire heart. <laughs> and the crowds of people don't respond. But you do see uh, the clown at the center pushing down and kind of sweeping the dirt with that push broom. Uh, cringes so hard that you hear a snap as the top of the oh, wood. The clown. Like, yeah, he like shatters the top of it and then like kind of looks around, throws it over his shoulder and continues to push with like three quarters of a push broom. I, I walk okay. up to the clown. In what the... time's the show starting? He keeps pushing. And excuse, one excuse eye, me? his head never turns, but one eye rolls over to acknowledge Whoa. you and blinks and returns back to its work as he continues to push. Excuse me, uh, Mr. Clown Man. Uh, I think he might be a Is mine. the show starting or ending? Uh, are you the only one over there right now? I I'm gonna hope say, not. like, he's at the very center. And that's going to be, uh, we'll call that 60 feet from like the front benches where you all were originally. Yeah, I'll, I'll, you jumped I'll the rail when you went to talk to him. Yeah, you jumped, jumped the rail. rail. I'm still on the bench. I'm still on the bench. I'm right. on the bench One because the bench. we don't work here. Two on the bench. We can, we can ask a worker here getting... instead of jumping into where the show is. I didn't see anybody this man but is this working. clown dude in the middle of the ring here, man. <laughs> I learned like, my lesson look, the first time. We, you, didn't mm -hmm. you say that we needed answers quick? That's what that's what someone said. We're getting the hard answers real fast. All right, that's yeah, what's happening. We're running out of time. Wata and I are watching from the sidelines. Yeah. So we're watching them talk, and I see disgusting popcorn and M and M spilling out of this bag, and I'm just realizing what she's done. And so I sit down and quit engaging and just let her do her. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Uh, so you ask a question again. Uh, Stick. What are you doing in this moment? Just looking cool. Oh, okay. You interrogate this clown further, and uh, he kind of turns in a different direction, continues to push, and the other eye turns to regard you, kind of looks you up and down. Blinks, and I show the ticket. And that makes his entire head turn. But he's still pushing. It's a discon like there's a very obvious like disconnection that's extremely off-putting as he continues his work. But he's looking at you. Is this clown when, alive? When does when does the show start? Now? Oh, Later, wait. I got... <laughs> <laughs> Are you here for jokes? Tricks? He I lets mean, go of the push broom, it continues to go. And in his hands, you see it? like three uh, red balls appear between his fingers and he begins to juggle. I like jokes, I like tricks, but 
we got tickets to come find some stuff and i was wondering if like this seemed like a very good side thing right here and yeah that's impressive man you didn't you and i just kind of stop big conversation and start watching stick you had a very specific question what do you want to know is this clown breathing <laughs> i want you to give me let's call it a nature check okay i got nature uh 17. the 17. Uh, you watch, and at first, uh, at first blink, you see that, like, every time he makes that manic giggle, you see his, like, whole chest rising and falling, and you know that, like, sound requires air, so there is breath happening. But you're standing close enough that the, like, the loudness of this, the, like, performance of it, you would feel breath on you, but you don't. This clown's dead. Do we still I'm have not dead. With us? <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for joy, to entertain. Isn't that what you're here for? Up. To be entertained. Oh. Baco will entertain. Actually, <laughs> actually, yes. I'm I'm here to find my action figure. It's a little dwarf with armor. Kind of looks like me without the bib and the blood. Well, there's kind of blood because there was that one time I played with that one kid. But anyway, I lost it here like when I was a kid, and I'm trying to find it now. And this is really cool and everything i just his hands you know, have moved in like this like mockery of like contemplation as you tell your story but the balls continue to juggle and the broom continues to push I it would be very entertaining talking. if so, you told yeah, us where our stuff you, was we're all looking for our stuff here is it he said it was entertaining if we found our stuff because then we get to enjoy you performing and then leave but you know if you enjoy my just, performance just wait only four more booms, and then you stay. I'll teach you oh, to be yeah. like me. <laughs> was, hey, uh, so was that firework a boom? Wait, wait, what? Yeah. What? Fireworks a boom. Oh, That's hey. the time. Was the was the cracking of the tank an, a what? boom as well? Because it was labeled no. a boom boom. So no. have we experienced two booms? What? What are? Do we what have two booms? more booms left, and we're stuck here? I need, I need to know. You what explained booms to us are, what like booms were. Tell us what the booms are, clown. Stick! Fire punch works. this clown, dude! Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> punch okay. the clown, Stick! You don't seem to be having very much fun. That's because I want to find my stuff! Punch you the clown, guys! A doll? An action figure, technically. I will but take doll you. And Bako right. reaches forward and tries to grab your hand. Do you allow it? Like he said he was going to take me, and I'll motion to the group to come over as this happens. I'll go, yeah, I'm going. I have no reason not to trust the killer clown in front of me. <laughs> so yeah, you let Faco like grab your hand and he like leads you across and out the back of the tent. And uh, those uh, red balls that were being juggled in the air like fall down to the ground and start bouncing uh, in a line following you all out so you can. That's terrifying. Yeah. So what are you guys, if, what are the rest uh, of you gonna do? If I, if I, if we're, we're following, if I'm following, as I see the balls, can I blow the whistle and see if that has an effect on the balls? Yeah. You blow a whistle and the balls pause in the air and then continue to go. So they're all controlled by some sort of weird magic with this whistle. Yeah, the clown is like pulling uh, your friend Jenny at like a very brisk pace and leading you in a weird line of bouncing red rubber balls like out the back of the tent in the direction but, uh, Wada that you remember that is. I saw. Yes, good. Yeah, right. he didn't Kettle tell us any of right? information. I... He did not. He is keeping yeah. it all real close to the vest and inside that little water suit. You can learn a lot so, by watching, but, guys. But stick it with me, right? <laughs> uh, I'm with you. Because he was right okay. beside me, right? Yep. Turtle, okay, so we we're all going? Yeah. We'll slowly go with My mom yeah. taught me we'll, never we'll, to let a lady go Keep a distance. Keep herself. a little bit of a distance. And I yeah. turned to stick. So you said he's dead? Yeah. He doesn't look dead. Neither do I. But neither of us are breathing. Wait, you're not breathing? Like that, uh, that is... <laughs> Where's this clown taking us? Sweet. So uh, the clown leads you out the tent, and I will uh, just let you know that you have not seen Kettle Steam in a couple minutes. Oh, so I missed cool. you. Oh. Mischief. Mm -hmm. But yes, as you kind of fully exit the tent and head back into an area that's much darker than the rest of this, like, extremely well-lit, like, musically, like, full and vibrant carnival, you go somewhere darker, a little more private, 
and you hear the sounds of like ropes snapping and tearing and a couple uh, crowds screaming from within the tent. Good that screams or bad screams? You said it gets darker, right? Is this magical darkness or is this like just dark? Uh, it's more like this is not like a part of the carnival like proper, so it's not lit for crowds and artifacts. Oh, okay. It seems but like it they're going somewhere a little lit. Awesome, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, ah, like you hear yes. you hear the happy like crowing of kettle steam causing more mischief back in the tents. So as you walk out into this increasing darkness, it's not dark. It's just especially after being in, under like the garish lights of the carnival proper. It's calm and it's peaceful. And you all smell this incredibly sweet scent in the air. It's like sweet night blooming flowers, but also a bit like fruit that's gotten just a little overripe, so it's sweet but rotten. Okay, I'm back in and it back carries in. it on the breeze and you have uh, strong memories that tie you back to those moments uh, in the depths of your despair when you lost those important things that you lost when you were children. And you're immediately thrown back into that moment as you walk and you see a little clearing and uh, in front you see a smaller tent, it looks like a the dollhouse version of the big top. It's only about eight feet tall. Everything else is to scale, including like these tiny little flags like fluttering in the breeze and miniature globules of light that are only an inch or two across, floating across the top of it. And you see written across the front, lost and found. Mm. Yay, we found it. Thanks, Killer yes. Clown Dude. Thako does not let go of your hand and only speeds up as he pulls you into the space. And you see in front of you a single table, no attendants, uh, no other objects there, but just a row of six porcelain dolls. And as he walks forward, his head turns 180 degrees to regard you as he drags you along behind him. He says, I found dolls for you. <laughs> Am I doing a good job entertaining me? <laughs> Tell me I did a good job. And the balls Is this all- Is your doll? Uh, Where's the lost and found, guys? Where are the you, lost you and found? Huh. What are the balls you doing? great <laughs> job. We're so entertained. Be entertained. Yeah, we're- we're entertained. Could you let go of my hand now? Cause I'm so, you did a great job. And he kind of thrusts you into the tent and he begins doing like these little cartwheels. They're perfect, but they're in like weirdly slow motion. Cartwheels around the edge of the tent, but his head stays in its like relative position the whole uh. time. So it sort of rolls across his body as he watches you oh with this like terrifying grin as you regard these six dolls. All of them are like, little baby doll, like baby girl dolls of like extremely frilly uh, little girls with like red ringlets and porcelain skin with like rosy cheeks and dead terrible eyes because dolls are horrifying and like mm -hmm. um, lacy red pinafore dresses. But I don't see my action figure at all, right? You do not see your action figure at all. And I, and I notice the clown just creepily cartwheeling around and I'm like, I'll give him the and then I'll go look at the dollhouse because maybe my action figure is in the dollhouse. Uh, sorry, to clarify, the dollhouse was just that like this lost and found room is like a miniature version of the big top 10. Oh, the only thing okay. in here is just the table with the dolls on it and then our cartwheeling clown. And friend. your cartwheeling clown and uh, his balls are bouncing around in the circle too and they actually surround As you. As they do. As they do. Um, yeah, what are you gonna do with these dolls? Uh, I'm ready to blow this whistle, mess up this whole operation. Blow the whistle. I don't like this guy's balls. I'll look at these. I'll Can look at I? these dolls with my monocle. What are you looking for? I want to see if there's any magic around these dolls. If they're if they're if they're alive currently, or if they used to be alive. Uh, uh, you look through the monocle, and alive is a strange word. So you don't see life but you see animation, you see magic, like pollen, suffusing the joints of these dolls. And 
narrowed to like green burning points of light in the eyes and in the mouth. These are deeply magical objects. These things are alive. Watch out. These things are alive. Watch out. What do you see? What do you see, Fuata? What do you so see with your elf eyes? Dolls. There's something with these dolls, guys. There's a lot whoa, of magic whoa, surrounding whoa. them. Saw it as we were going in here as well. I feel personally like if we don't get hey, out of here, we're hey, getting into the dolls. We're so entertained. All right. We're gonna if we him tell him out. that we're entertained, then he's not going to help us anymore. Why don't we just tell him that we're not no, entertained so we no. can find the stuff that's actually entertaining to us that we want? All right. Well, I... you you do that. And uh... I think Stick needs to step up here and, and beat this clown into submission to get some answers. Why do you want me to punch the clown? Yep. Because you're our uh, whistle and punch. Start to cartwheel with the clown as they start talking about not being entertained i'm entertained and i'll try to keep up pace with him okay uh i'm going to have you make an acrobatics check with disadvantage not oh. because you can't do a cartwheel but because you sort of realize that like it it's moving slow and it's hard to like match a slow perfect cadence you can okay. cartwheel you but cartwheel? you can't cartwheel like a clown yeah. No. Oh. Maybe let's see. Let's see what you got. Show me what 17. you got. Oh. I rolled a ten plus seven. So. Seventeen is very good, and you're able mm -hmm. to match the clown. And after a couple uh, rotations, you make eye contact. His head has always stayed up, but as you meet his gaze, he blinks and claps over his head with delight and begins to laugh. And the dolls all begin to laugh. Oh, and I God. need all nope. of you to roll initiative. Nope. Whistle, whistle. Uh, time mm -mm. to fight nope. this clown. Nope. Maybe on your turn, Art. but it's initiative time, baby. Here we go. I know. I should have done it, and they would have been messed up before yeah. we started. 23. <sighs> okay, hold on. I will ask for it. Why didn't you blow this? All right. Did anyone get a 25 I started doing stuff. 20. I didn't want to mess her up. No. Nope. Nope. I didn't. All right. Oh, wait, I got a 23, 23, 23. What a, get it together. You did it backwards, 25, 20. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, did anyone get a 19 to 15? Uh, What'd you get? 19. Oh, okay. What'd you get? 16. Okay. 19 for Jenny. Uh, what's your dexterity score? Me? Uh, no, sorry. Stick, what is your dexterity score? Uh, my dexterity score is 13. Technically higher. Okay, you get to go first, and then the dolls will go, uh, first wave of dolls will go second. Uh, oh, God. Stick. I have forgotten how to spell the word stick, which is weird. <laughs> so upset. Yeah. I could have like nullified all these dolls yep. before we even started. You gotta sound it out. And now I'm going last. And now I'm going last. Yeah, what'd you get? Eight. Oh, okay. You're not <laughs> going last. You're fine, Donnie. But you probably should have blown the whistle. I should have blown the whistle. Always blow the whistle. That's why I looked through the monocle. Wada, you are up first. The dolls begin to laugh. So... I was already freaked out when I looked and saw, and then I explained to you guys that I was freaked out. So now mm -hmm. I know that we're probably getting into some stuff here. So I'm just gonna slowly kind of position myself behind the turtle man, because we're preparing for some combat here. So I'm gonna position myself and just kind of, uh, just kind of wait. Just kind okay. of wait, I'm just hiding. I'm just hiding, very, def All right. very uh, defensive, so... <laughs> cowardly. Call Go it what ahead. you will, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna ask you a or question. You... Yeah, of course. With my cube of force, uh -huh. can I make a barrier of some kind? You can absolutely make a barrier. So the question then becomes, what exactly do you want to, to create? Are these dolls still on the table or have they moved yet? They are all on the table, just laughing. I want to create a barrier around them. Like just so they, just to contain them. What yeah. kind of barrier? It, can it be any, anything I want? Uh, Girl, I'm gonna need you to look at your own magic item. <laughs> I did, um, but it, it confuses me. Uh, so there's three different types 
So, just sidebar, there's three different types of cubes that you can make. One is, like, oh. something to contain, some, like, there's yep. three different types, so look at which five. one you want to do. There are five Sorry, five. Different types. So, five. It's been a so, while. Five. It's been a while. Five different types. So, you have to find which one you want to use. So, you tell me how many charges you want to spend, and you can create one of these kinds of effects for mm. your cube. So, you're going to create this, like, big wall of force around yes. them. But you have to yep. decide, like, what can permeate it. And that's based on how many charges you spend. I want to make a barrier. Nothing can pass through this barrier. That's what you want. Yeah, I'm gonna, I, I want that one. I want that one. Five charges. There you go. So you spend five charges. Uh, why don't you sure tell do. me what it looks like as you activate this cube? Paint me a word picture, please. It's almost like a concrete kind of like wall looking thing. But it's not just like straight concrete. There's more like vines almost growing over it. So it's like a layer of a couple things. And the vines almost have like these sharp little things like barbed wire. And then that, that's what we're gonna that's what we're gonna do. Amazing. Concrete barbed wire vine wall. A totally <laughs> normal thing to see as you surround these dolls. As it completely closes off and shuts, you actually hear that sound no longer passes through. So you only heard half of the laughter. So I want you all I want you all to make wisdom saving throws, but you get advantage because he has stopped the magical effect as as it's happening. Nineteen. Beautiful. Nineteen as well. 14. Yep. How did you stick? Uh fifteen plus seven, twenty-two. Oh, nice. You're all perfect. As you feel like you feel the laughter. At first it sort of rolled over you, and then it feels almost like sticky, like an old snow cone that sort of sticky. splashes across your skin and gets a little cold and uncomfortable as this magical effect attempts to take hold of you. And you feel the urge to laugh and join in and not worry about whatever's happening here. It's not worry about the things that you've lost. Because how can you be worried when there's so much laughter in the world? And then it stops and you all shake it off. Nicely done. Next up is Jenny. Jenny. All right, so this is what's going to happen. I'm going to use my bonus action to, like, as I'm cartwheeling on pace, I see him do the wink clap thing, and I'm like, oh, I didn't like that. He's obviously trying to hit on me as a creepy clown, and I don't appreciate <laughs> that because Jenny is her own woman, Respect. damn it. So <laughs> I'm going to enter a rage because every woman <laughs> hates being hit on by evil clowns. Um, yeah. This is true. This is truth. People is, should be writing this, this is down. This true, right? Well, no, we don't want to uh, assume. So we don't want to assume. World, if you're an evil clown out there in the world, do not hit on me. <laughs> this will be exactly what happens to you. Yeah. So, this as sounds I very exclusionary. Rage, this is all I'm going to see when I, like, enter the airport now is, like, killer clowns now hitting on me when I go. <laughs> I, it's just going to be the worst. I already know this is going to happen. So, let me enter a rage as I'm cartwheeling. I want to enter a rage, but turn this into like a Simone Biles, uh, like type of gymnastics routine. <laughs> yeah. As I pull out my great sword to swing and hit the killer cartwheel clown. Oh, you're going to try to hit my sweet clown, but he's so nice. Make an attack roll. He helped. Cool. Mm, agree to disagree. Uh, okay, that's fair. That will be a, a synthetic twenty. To synthetic hit. twenty. <laughs> Amazing. All right, that hits. Cool. And then he will take 15 points of damage from my first attack. And then, because I'm Jenny from the block, baby, I want to chest bump him with my spiky armor for my second attack. Before you're <laughs> to able to do him. that, his reaction's going to trigger, and two okay. of the bouncing rubber balls like fling in your direction. I knew, I knew these balls okay. were going to be a problem. After <laughs> AC, you're written here, and I just hit you with a 17. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. And as they kind of jump, nice rolls. Uh, as they kind of jump up, they fly and hit you in the face. And you feel, uh, did you play like dodgeball when you were younger? Of course I did. I'm a dwarf. We threw yeah. rocks at each other though. Oh, okay. So it's called dodge rock. Maybe you guys have heard of it. I was going it's to make it like a sport. rubber dodgeball, but you're the one that made it feel like a rock as you take <laughs> 12 points of bludgeoning damage as this thing like, oh, no. you can feel it like break the bone of your cheek and the other one like shifts your jaw over just a little bit as they like both hit you and then resume their like place bouncing around the room. 
oh go ahead God. and uh so i want make to it a, try to knock him roll. off like his feet with this i don't i don't know if i can you can certainly Just try chest bumping with my spiky armor yeah and go ahead i'm gonna be like Sup. and then we'll do an opposed like grapple check to see if you can like knock him off of his uh little ride what's your thing because it's in your chest right yeah my little my wandy piece is in my chest like underneath okay. the bib there um, that would be 12 plus 7, 19. 19 absolutely hits. Uh, now give me an athletics check to see if you can like knock him off. You're gonna have to beat a natural 20. Whoa. Does an 8 count as a natural 20? <gasps> oh! <laughs> oh! 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 What? Nani? It 100% oh. does. <laughs> oh. So do we have a roll off now? No, <laughs> you win. Eights are special. So describe for me what it looks like as you chest bump the clown and knock him off of his axe. As the balls like hit me in the face, I have like PTSD, <laughs> like from my childhood of Dodge Rock because I was the smallest little dwarf, right? I was, and I just wanted to live up to my hero's expectations. So like you just see my eyes just like emblazoned in red and I just run as hard as I can and I chest bump him with my spiky armor and my bloody butcher's bib like into the wall. That first like strike that you did with your greatsword, you saw that it cut him and you saw the slash through and you felt it push through flesh, but you didn't see any blood and he didn't seem to react, but this pushing him off and away from like his intended course, you knock him back into the like side of the tent and he kind of stumbles down and rolls over. He pushes himself up to standing, and his head moves back to the proper spot on his neck and shoulders. And that grin and drops and flips to a massive frown, and his Let's eyes go. blink. And I gotta roll my damage. <laughs> oh yeah, go ahead. Spiky armor damage is six points damage. So. Ooh, we love that. Mm. Total 21, that's a good round. And Thaco looks angry. Good. And you see, Come at like, me, bro. He's certainly going to. Thako is up. And as he sort of pushes himself up to standing, he points. And uh, the other four balls, the other than the two that didn't uh, hit you, uh, or the two that hit you, they all go and they're going to start attacking the cube that you've put around the dolls to try to uh, break through to let these little girls out. You see... You don't see it, you feel it, uh, Huata, as like cracks in your like viney, barbed wiry cubes start to go up. They are pushing in, they haven't broken through, but there is some deep magical effect that's happening here. It's more than bludgeoning damage and it's beginning to attack and knock down the cube, but it will hold for this round as they kind of just like start pelting back and forth trying to shatter it. And uh, Thako himself, who is now like just standing, is going to reach forward towards you. He just wants to give you a big hug. So I need he you to make a strength saving throw. Oh, I would man, like if he to tries react. to grapple me, he takes damage too, because of that armor. Yeah. Uh, what's your reaction? Because Stick was uh, standing next to Jenna. Jenna. Um, I assume if he's trying to go give Jenna a hug, then he's moving within 10 feet of stick, right? Here's where I'm gonna be a little bit spicy with the rules. Your turn hasn't come okay. yet, so she moved out and away from you to go like engage with Thaco oh, the Cloud. Oh, okay. Okay, so, she moved. Okay. Those cartwheels. We're good. Yeah. So yeah, I was doing cartwheels of doom with my man. Sweet. So how'd you do, Jedi? Uh, that will be 11 plus seven, 18. He moves in and wraps his arms around you and you even hear him deflate just a little bit as the spikes press into him, but he hugs you and he keeps hugging you. And you feel oh. and hear the groan and cracking as he attempts to give you the best hug anyone's ever gotten. And you're going to take 12 points. Oh, Bingles. I'm raging, so I only take half. Yeah, but you are grappled right now for what it's worth. Okay. As he's just okay. holding you. You're both kind of doing a terrible thing together is what I'm going to call that. <laughs> and then move on with my day. Stick, you're up. Stick is going to get closer to the action going on over there. The the spiky hug. Yeah. And um, he's going to take off his glasses. 
because it's time to dance with this clown. <laughs> oh. And he's gonna uh -oh. wild shape his uh, symbiotic entity as the spores that you didn't even know were surrounding you the entire time <laughs> cloud his eyes and they become a dark black and you notice that his muscles become a little bit even more jacked and he just looks a little bit more stronger, more solid. And then, I'm not sure about the grapple rules, but can I shillelagh this guy while he's hugging and he yeah, can't absolutely. dodge because he's hugging? I'm like yeah, four I'm gonna five. Yeah, I'm going to this guy. I'm pretty sure you have a clear target. You've got a head. clear big target that's like hitting the broad side of a barn. I'm going to shillelagh him. Go ahead and make an attack roll. Shillelagh. Right. Now, the fact that he is not grappled means that you don't roll with advantage. So that's 18 plus 4, 22. Absolutely hits. <laughs> so, so Stick winds up his goofiest staff and swipes <laughs> at the clown. And, you, um, yeah, go ahead and roll your damage. As you make impact, you see like it's like a beach ball getting hit. But as you follow through with that club, you feel it hit and break bones, rib, like ribs on the inside of him. And then it makes a squeak sound. Not at all. Yeah. What's ah, the damage? Because that's creepy. Um, so I got some different damage dice because I'm hitting him, but also I'm a fungus man. So I'm doing a melee attack <laughs> and it does additional. I'm yes. a fungus vampire. Let's I go. Know. That's a completely normal vampire that we all know about. Yeah, everybody knows about the fungus vampires. Yeah. So I'm rolling a D8 and a D6 for damage. Sweet. Ooh. Actually, two D8. While you roll that, I'm gonna make the dumbest joke I'm gonna make tonight, and it's Twilight reference, it. and I'm gonna call you Portobello oh, Swan. Oh, let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> hey, and you know where he lives? Forks, what up, Twilight, let's, let's go. go. <laughs> They're not werewolves, they're shapeshifters. Read the books, baby, what up, come on. Uh, Twilight welcome. is not about the love story of Edward and Bella at all. That's all we talk about. We wanna get real, those are incredible books. Sorry, continue. Please, Sorry. God, Brandon, give me some damage. <laughs> I got five, five, and eight. You're gonna make me add that up to 18? That's. Yeah, I'm gonna make you guys add that. That's not like a microaggression. I don't approve. <laughs> he is mad. looking pretty jacked up. Is there anything else that you can or want to do? I will not. So then we go in and we sort of like the camera pushes in on these dolls who uh, are just trapped in this cube. Their mouths are open. You hear nothing. And then one of them is going to uh, take one for the team and self-destruct no. and blows up at the very end and is going to take out another one of the dolls with it. The one at the very end will catch another one at its blast radius, but because it was on the edge, it's going to blow out and cause a little bit more damage to your cube. I'm doing magical effects. I'm not listing them because we're not here to do like a like play by play of like the spells that are slowly breaking this down, but they are all um, throwing... Please explain. Um, I will not. <laughs> yeah, I'm not <laughs> and you're not my real dad. Uh, <laughs> so this cube is going to be coming down next round, but now there are only four dolls on the inside. And uh, next up is Donnie. So I saw that explosion happen. And so there's cracks that air is getting in. Yeah. So if there's air getting in, there's sound getting in. So what I'm gonna do is yeah, put that ahead. whistle to my lips and it's time to blow. It's time to blow this whistle. I'm done with this. Rip yeah. all the magic blow. out of everything. I'm done. I'm done watching this happen. Get the magic out of those balls. This is an object interaction and a free move. Ooh, oh. Let's go. Bless you. Oh, no, you don't want to thank me. Oh, you blow okay. the whistle. And however, how long do you blow the whistle for? Can like I blow the whistle for the duration? So six seconds, your full round? Yeah, but can I still do move around and attack? Yeah, you can like have it kind of out of the side of your mouth while you're doing whatever you're doing. But six seconds is an important amount of time. Do oh, note it. You know what? I'm well. You did it. Okay, you did you know it. And I did I'm it. I did it. I did it. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, no. Don't take these backsies, brother. Yeah. I can't take Don't it take back. Don't take these backsies. No. Uh, I need you to roll for me. Uh, 64. 64. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, please roll low. Fine that's with that. Thaco the clown and, begins in, in to In total, swell that's up. ten. That's ten in total. Yep. Oh. He's swelling. Oh, he's gonna he's gonna blow up. Sorry, guys. Like a balloon. <laughs> swelling out and forward. You feel that pressure on you. Uh, 
Jenny, you're going to take to this guy. You're going to take another it's like, two it's like points me of just... damage as like you get so... crushed down a little bit more. But you did ten points, so I'm going to ask you to describe for me what happens when Thaco the clown pops. Ugh. <laughs> you finish him off with the whistle. When Thaco the clown pops, he so he starts to grow and grow and grow. But as he's growing, one tiny little hole pops in the temple of his head, <laughs> and it's just. <laughs> This high pitch, and we watch as his features go from monstrously grotesque like Akira, and they whittle down. His arm is losing air, and his other arm, and then his ear is starting to lose it. And he's looking at us with that grin, and he's smiling. But as his face deflates, it begins to frown as his bodily functions all begin to occur in one spot, right on top of Ember. While she's already covered in trash and all this, so she's fine. Whatever. Oh, That's good. Had, until he's almost looks like you know those big parachutes you would use if you lived on <laughs> when you were a kid in elementary school. A hundred percent, yes. He looks. He looks like that. That is on top of Ember now. <laughs> because, <laughs> <laughs> excuse me. On top of uh, Jenny. 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 So Jenny, Jenny. you're gonna have Jenny. to spend half of your movement uh, getting out from underneath uh, the deflated Thaco. Just, just... Um, actually, the clown died ten feet from me. So okay. that's my clown now. <laughs> what does that mean? Uh, I'm going to use my halo of spores, which uh, encompass the 10 foot area around me. And that, clou that clown will be animated by my fungus and he will become my clown. <laughs> this is the most upsetting thing I've ever heard. <laughs> And so so the so spores will just start to slide to in to the hole. Well, now you have to describe tunnel. how your spores reinflate and reanimate this guy. And <laughs> please, please paint me a word picture because I hate this with my entire brain. She's trying to get out. Okay, so yep. So there's this deflated clown on top yeah. of Jenna <laughs> with a hole in its temple. And the spores that actually invisibly surround it you can't see it, but you can see the clown start to become full again as mushrooms actually start to sprout through other holes and it begins to stand up like a even worse zombie clown. Oh, I thought I and died. he's waving his arms like a wacky inflatable arm flailing <laughs> tube man. If you haven't used your inspiration, uh, or if you've used your inspiration already, please take another one. Because I hate that so much. <laughs> so it. good. I hate it and I did it. But I will um, say, my sweet Donnie, before you do whatever you do next, actions have consequences. Mm -hmm. And the thing that happens when you blow your whistle, especially the longer you blow it, you are forcing the Fae to drop their veneer, whatever they're pretending to be, and they become that which they truly are. The balls freeze because they are animated. Palasha became the feral creature, the sea witch and monster that she really is. And these little dolls stop the veneer of being sweet, gentle toys and begin to burst out of their like porcelain shell. And they're these just like little, like pollen gremlins of like pulsing orange light. And because they're no longer confined to this form, where sound went in, spores, pollen exits out, and they pour together and become like one large creature. So what would you like to do? I'm attacking with my quarter staff. Yes. This new thing that I see in do front of it. me. Do it. Because you're so excited, I'm gonna attack with my quarter staff and I'm gonna throw in a, oh, actually, let me see if it hits. Let me see if it hits. Yeah, let's find out if it hits. That's a 16. Oh, yeah. that means I rolled an eight. That's an eight. Eight. Oh, you rolled an eight? I rolled an eight, yes. Good, because the 16 wasn't gonna hit, but a natural 20, well, a natural eight Perfect. absolutely does. So go Perfect. ahead and I double your eights. damage. And I'm versatile, so that means I'm rolling a D8 instead of a D6. Love it. So, so boom, we roll that bad boy. And that's 13, but, but we're also oh, gonna oh. make this, it's a stunning strike. They can go ahead, that <sighs> four monster can go ahead and try to roll con save. If not, <laughs> it's gonna be stunned for a little bit, and then my friends are gonna come stomp him out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Does a seventeen you... make it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what's funny about that? You know what's uh -huh. funny about that? Because I burned a key to do that. I'm gonna burn another key oh. to uh, to uh, okay. uh, to flurry okay. of blows. Let's, let's go. Let's go. 
That's Let's his go. first one hit. That's a 12 plus six. That's an 18. Does that hit? Just hits. Let's go. And then another one. And that's a 19 plus six. That's a 25. That hits Absolutely right there. Absolutely. Yeah. As you so begin I'm to go. light this thing up, go. Uh, there's a, it's an eight and a six, but that first one, I'm going to burn a key. Go ahead and roll that con save. Are You're you trying burning to sunny strike it again? Yes, I am. And an eight and six damage. <laughs> Uh, hold on, let me just double check something. <laughs> yeah, okay, sweet. Does a 15 make it? Dang it, it's a 14. But I'm gonna burn another key on that second <laughs> unarmed attack. I'm gonna knock this thing out. Con save, again. Con save. All right, all right, all right. You're using all of your juice. <laughs> do you have inspiration? I do, and I'm about to burn it because I know that you rolled well. I did, I did. <laughs> do you want to use your inspiration to force me to reroll? Yes, I do. Okay. Or can I, I force? Can I just force you to be stunned with my inspiration? <laughs> I'm gonna. Ask. No, it's a reroll. But I appreciate okay. you trying. I got a natural one. Yeah. Him so. ah, sleepy. So, so can I? Can I? Can I describe how I'm stunning striking this thing? Please do. Explain this, how this, you <laughs> stunning strike pollen. This pollen I hate monster this. that I see. It's kind of forming into some sort of humanoid shape, maybe, I think. But I can kind of visualize where the internal organs are. I can visualize where the guts are. And we know from fact in my travels of fighting, if you destroy the body, the head will follow. So what do I do? I catch him in the gut with a nasty right uppercut, right into where I think the solar plexus are. There's and now no it's down organs. Stuff. It's pollen. <laughs> but then what are you stunned for? What you stunned for if you ain't got no organs, buddy? I don't know. Why are you stunned? I honestly Why are you don't stunned? know how I'm stunned. <laughs> no one is more shocked than I am in this moment, sir. Let me be very Punch. clear. Johnny coming through with the bully punches. A stunned creature is incapacitated, can't move, wasn't speaking anyway, doesn't have a mouth, uh, fails strength and dex, and attacks against it have advantage. As I am <laughs> very sad to uh, report that it is its turn is wasted because it was next in initiative. It was going last. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Stop it out. So we return nice. back to the top. Quata, you are up. Mm. You see a so, pollen monster in front of you. However, I would not be a good DM if I didn't have a reason to pull you away from this fight because you still remember just a little ways away, only meters. You see through that like green glass, the people that you're looking for and they're beginning to move. Do you stay and fight or do you complete the task? He's going, ah, you, 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 you. <laughs> We tried to help him. I just want you guys to know, we tried to help you. This is how we feel playing with you every other time. <laughs> he's completely correct. When, That's as soon as he said he's getting behind right, me, I almost called him It Ember. always comes down to you. Uh, so all's forgiven? Guys, you, I think it's you a got toe. this fight taken care of. I think you got this fight taken care of, right? Definitely. Oh, you, oh. What's three what do you people against a stunned pollen monster? In an illusion-filled carnival, you want to leave to go get what you think you came for instead of finishing the fight and then check it? Look, don't listen to them. Your glass, your monocle hasn't let you down yet. You but see, but who someone. gave you the monocle? Who gave you, you the monocle? It was a fair trade for a toe. The carnival. That's the only thing here that we cannot trust. This carnival has given you everything you've ever wanted. Aren't you having a that wonderful time? There you are hear free a snacks firework. Everywhere. Two fireworks two. go off overhead. What do you two have to do? More. Two more. So no, yeah, the first one was one. This one is two. We have one more firework we and we're three done. three more fireworks. No, we have, we have two four. more have soundings of the fireworks. You've got three. We just heard two. Okay, okay. It's no, counting up, three. so hour one, hour two. I'll just explain that up top instead of like being like, yeah. mystery, <laughs> it's a one shot, calm down, we're good. You got it. We all know what we're doing here. Wata, what are you going to do? I'm staying in the fight. Okay, yeah! okay. I, I'm not going to go to him. I was hiding behind him. Mm -hmm. Am I now still or am I fairly far away? I'll let you decide whatever is more interesting for you. I'm not worried about like the like tactical placement. I'm thinking I kind of like what he was doing. I'm going to go up and I'm going to attack, but I'm I'm also really sneaky. So it's going to be a sneak attack. Cause then, and then I also there want are, to- There are other people within melee. So this is absolutely a sneak attack. You're good. They're very um, focused on other people. I have done nothing yet so far. So they, I'm the least of their worries or so they think. speak for my monster. I gave oh, you God. sneak attack. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm sneak attacking. I'm sneak attacking, and then 
Also, uh, I want to use cunning action to hide after I attack. So I'm literally just like getting in there, peppering, and getting out. Make an attack roll. You have advantage. You also would have had sneak, sneak attack. attack because when you attack with advantage, you get your sneak attack in. So make your attack roll. Roll it again. See if you get an 8 or a 20. Attack roll 20. Here goes 20 fun. 20 first time. 16. 16 does not hit. Roll again. You only rolled one. Second. 20! Yeah. <gasps> yeah. There you go. Natural 20 or a dirty 20? Natural. You know what? You just tell me what the damage is and I'll bubble it for you. Don't even worry about okay. it. I got you, baby. Just roll your damage. <laughs> don't forget your sneak attack dice. Yes. I, I rolled arm blade and then now sneak attack. Perfect. Eight plus four. All of that gets doubled, so you do 24 points of damage. Oh my and god! And I will also, uh, I will <laughs> gently remind you that instead of doing the custom roll, you can click on uh, the, the the plus to hit with your weapon, and it'll roll that for you with all of the like d20 stuff added in. Yeah, free. So where it says hit DC, when you need to see if you actually hit the attack, just click on what's underneath hit DC, and it'll automatically do the math for you. Yep. And then if you need to do the damage, just click what's underneath damage. Just click that. There you go. Do it for you. So that was a bad roll. Yep. So we got that one out of the way. So yeah. perfect. Why don't you describe for me with your uh, your arm javelin? What does that look like? What does your attack look like? My arm javelin, it's not very, it's not very intimidating. It's arm it's just kind of one of those things where it's it's here, but it's up a tiny little bit off of my arm and it sticks out a little bit past my fist. So if I'm kind of punching, it, oh, it's like great. it does the it does some damage, but I'm not really like doing a ton. So seeing my turtle friend as he was in there, kind of putting it to him, I hop in there, but I got a little bit of help, right? So I'm in there and I do a couple little bit and I run right back behind him. So you're trying to disengage so you don't take an opportunity attack as you leave, correct? Yes. Cool, so you absolutely do that and you post up back behind Donnie again. Got That's a right. bunch of very good damage in. And this yes. thing is like scattered and falling away and you see some of that like orange pulsing glow begins to dim and a lot of the pollen like falls away and it's just sort of dormant on the ground. And I'm just gonna offer up because I have to make you feel a little bit bad about the opportunity cost that you see those two points of light as you go back and hide behind Donnie. You see thinly through the tent that they are moving out and away. You punched dust, and I hope that was good for you. Jenny, you were <laughs> worth it. All right, Jenny ain't running from a fight. This is, <laughs> this is, cause I'm still raging, right? And I don't lose any of my movement because- um, Correct. Stick made it the clown into like a, a plant. Um, yep. So yeah, so- <laughs> A fungus. Jenny's coming with that great sword, and mind you guys, I'm coming in hot with rage, baby. 13 plus seven, 20. Oh, plus eight, sorry. Yeah. 21. Absolutely hits. And then my second attack. Yeah, so you're gonna double all of the dice. So also, because Double the I dice and add the modifiers at the end. So I got slasher as a feat. So oh I grievously wound it. And as, until the start of my next turn, it has disadvantage on all attacks, as well as it movement. Already it already did. It stunned. <laughs> Just, <laughs> 15 plus 5, 20 points of damage. But because I am who I am, I'm a battle rager, baby, and we living up to the point name. I get a bonus action attack with my spiky armor, baby. <laughs> And it's an eight. <laughs> oh. We like eights. I like eights. We like, baby. We like eights. Here's, uh, what we're, here's what we're not going to uh, do. We are not going to pre spend precious narrative time rolling dice because you have absolutely murked this thing. So just describe how you utterly so, destroy it. So Please. I want to go sword, strike, Sword swipe, back up, slap yeah. chest on him, and I want to run through the pollen chest first, but like because it's pollen, I go right yeah. through it, and then I eat the wall and slide down, but I want to turn to the group and say, nailed it. <laughs> nice. You scatter this into motes of light and dust that fall away and dim and disappear into nothingness, and the light in the room drops down 
to a gentle glow lit by nothing you can see within this tent. It's the little globules of light on the outside kind of pouring in through the very thin sheets of the tent. And here's the thing, it might be a stereotype to like take off your earrings when you're gonna get in a fight. I wasn't gonna do this. We were gonna have let's a go. different oh. kind of game. Oh. Oh, let's go. Okay, let's go. But y'all oh. decided to murk my stuff. So go. here's what's gonna happen. <laughs> what's oh. gonna happen? I Someone need all of you to make a dexterity saving throw as the tent is thrown open. And I'll offer it to you, Huata. You see two green points, bodies, resolving in a run. But you lose sight of it every now and then behind something that's blocking it, that's obscuring your view as a massive creature tears into the tent. So give me that deck save. You need to uh, be I a 20. 22. Um, I got uh, a dirty 20. Does Ty go to defender? <laughs> need to beat it, so you're okay. Sir, did you just run away from this fight? What happened? You left? I didn't. I didn't. I celebrated I just, a beautiful just, victory. I, at a time like this? Yeah. No, no, no. Just a quick You missed switch. all quick of switch. my glory. Guys, you don't missed worry. Jenny's I was, proud moment. I was safe. I was hiding. We're good. We're just uh -huh. move on with our I lives. Don't want, I don't want these good people watching to have to freak out, so I'm going to freak out for them. That's unacceptable. <laughs> the more I got to think about it as we were figuring this out, you should all be making this deck save with disadvantage because as <sighs> Ember so tactfully put, you don't see this coming. That one's on Jenny. She got real excited yeah. about her uh, pollen. Jenny from the block. Perfect. We're about to switch to attack the block. Let's go. Give me, me those new. You kidding me, Ember? You kidding me? I rolled a, I rolled a 10 now. Oops. I rolled a love 7. Love that. So Oops. you can come down here with me, baby. No, I I'm not I'm not happy. Through. Now we're both getting hit. Yep. Yeah, that's fine. How are you looking, right scary, stick? Scary. 11. I'm about to break a stick. Bring me home, <laughs> Huata. How'd you do? <laughs> Ten, not good, ten, not good. Oh, all of you are going to take 14 points mm. of bludgeoning damage as you get trampled by this massive beast. This thing uh. looks a lot like a dragon, but longer and leaner and stranger with like gangly green limbs, uh, sickly wings coming off of its back that end at like points by its face at the end of this long serpentine neck. It doesn't have the long muzzle of a dragon. It's a blunted, almost humanoid face, except the eyes are two bright white sockets pouring sickly white light and its mouth hanging over. There's so many teeth, Wata, standing beside it, behind it. At a safe, respectable 20 to 25 feet, two shatter kai, Elves, the owners of the Witchlight Carnival, Mr. Witch and Mr. Light, smile and regard you and let go of the Jabberwock's leash. Can I talk to y'all about my what? action figure? You guys are all gonna take 14 points of damage. 14. Uh, what type? Uh, yeah. Uh, it's bludgeoning, so bludgeoning. half yours. Ooh, I'm up. Okay. Um, where is this Jabberwock in position to us? Right on top of you. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to uh, jump up. Mm. And because I'm a super cool vampire, I'm going to bite him and get that health what? back that he stole from me. <laughs> Don't bite my guy. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm going to bite him and I'm going to use primal savagery. <laughs> What a nightmare. I didn't think you were going to bite my guy. And also, if Stick, don't forget, you still have uh, Thaco. Yeah. I have my so, clown. You <laughs> have your clown. Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, the clown did also take uh, 14 points of damage. Oh, I hate to see it. You hate to see it. <laughs> but he's your problem now, so you get to deal with that. He's, he's our clown. So that you know, is... I've never uh, heard a phrase I hate more than he's our clown. <laughs> he's <laughs> our clown. That did such damage to, to me. never talk to ever again. 22. Hits. I bite, so I just, I jump, because he's so much bigger than me, I just jump up and I bite him like... I'm Where like do you bite this boy on his body? On his throat. Okay. Are you right, gonna he's got a lot of throat meat, so throat. that's fine. 
eight and seven, so 15 damage Beautiful. that I will reabsorb back into my form, my Amazing. vampire form. <laughs> you just jump up and like hop, attach your mouth to its very, like the base of its very long neck close to its clavicle where that good carotid artery would meet and the rest of its head bends around and you are just bathed in bright white light as it regards you and chatters in your face. I need you to make for me a wisdom saving throw. Nat 20 plus seven. You shy away a little bit from the light just instinctively. And as you kind of close your eyes, you feel that little budding bit of fear of the thing at the core of you that you hate and want to keep far from you. The beat of your own heart in excitement and joy. And you push it down and away and it doesn't affect you. And I guess you just stay clamped to it? Do you, do you let go, sir? No, nope, um, he's just on there, no. all right. Because cause I'm setting up for my clown. <laughs> Psychotic, please. <laughs> Mushroom clown, what is happening there? I do need to know this. I'm basically going to, a, a stick is going to kind of, um, you know how the, you know, the attack dogs, when they like, when they jump up and bite and then they do that like ripping motion that throws you off balance. I'm gonna do like, that into like, whatever clown wants to do. Do you want it to attack, defend, deflect? I want them to attack. Sweet. So this weird like, it's like a balloon full of confetti, but the confetti is mushrooms. Rolls, and you can hear it. It sounds a bit like a bingo ball, like the little like bingo things. Like oh, as he no. like picks oh, up God. steam, rolls, and like plows into the Jabberwock. Uh, I guess I'll make, you can make the attack roll. Make an attack okay. roll, add a three for its strength. 17 plus three. A 20 is enough yeah, to hit. Right. The insane amount of mass behind uh, dead, dead mushroom Thaco is still enough to knock this huge beast off of its bearing and it like staggers back and you see that both Mr. Uh, Mr. Witch and Mr. Light like jump out and away to like stay clear of this thing as its tail like kind of spins out. Anything yeah, else you wanna I'm do? Gonna land. I'm gonna put my glasses back on and be like, good work, clown. <laughs> it's Pretty dope, all things considered. <laughs> I'm gonna call upon my old friend who owes me a favor. <laughs> old girl Palacia, come and help your boy yeah. out real quick. Palacia, please heed my call. At this point in time, I need your help more than I ever could have. Please <laughs> come and help us defeat this evil, disgusting monster so we can get out of this place. You Great. stand out and you're like yelling into the darkness and you hear a whisper in your ear and feel just like a gentle spray of water. She says, name your request. Can you kill this thing? I can assist you, but I can't kill the Jabberwock. And in any case, it never really stays dead. Mm. But if you want okay. me to assist you, I can. Yes, please, I would like that very much. If you could assist me and my friends, that would be a great help to us. You see coming off of like the trees in the area, like, a time lapse of like dew forming on leaves as like a cascade of water shoots off of all of this natural foliage and swirls up and around. And you actually can feel it, uh, Huata, because you are in and of her like magical water. And it, you actually see like little ripples going across that like watery vibe of you as she like gathers her power here to assist you. Ooh. She yeah. helps however she can. Okay, perfect. I'm gunning towards this thing, quarterstaff in hand, holding it with two hands, and I'm making an attack at this horrible monster that it stands in front of us. And yeah. on that first attack with the quarterstaff, that's gonna be a 17. Is that gonna hit? 17 doesn't hit. Did you roll with advantage? I'm doing that now, actually. And that's gonna be a 10. Uh -huh. So um, that first one's not gonna hit. So what, you go up attack? and you hit it. Here's the thing, you connect. It just doesn't do damage as this thing like moves its gaze from stick over to you and just watches could, you hit it. 
could I still burn a key for a stunning strike with no damage to stun it? We're doing it. Go ahead. You're burning. Yeah, you're burning. we're doing it. Burn. Con save. I got that. I got that extra attack. And let's okay. swing with advantage. So that's 18. All right. And then uh, 27. That's going to yeah. hit. Uh huh. Let's roll that damage. Damage. Boom. That's nine. And then we're going to burn a key with that stunning strike. Okay, okay. Got a 25. Cool. That's it's cool. a dragon. It's got a good comm score. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. This is good. How many kids do we have, baby? Death. That's I'm what out. works. You just gotta kill it. Ooh. Kill it dead. <laughs> oh no. Ooh. I'm out. But you gotta, but you they gotta can hold it down for 30 down. minutes while I take a nap. <laughs> yeah, just I can take a nap go over to the side. Up. Just take a little nap, any nap. Okay, so with yeah. your movement, are you going to stay in melee range with it? I'll just back up then. All right, so, so it go is going to that. lash out at you uh, with one of its claws. Uh, does it, I don't have to ask. I do, in fact, know that a 19 hits you. And it's going to swat at you. That's tied, though. Why did ties hit? <laughs> because... Whoever's acting gets it. Fine. That's not on so much. Me. I didn't make the rules. I just love them a ton. You're going to take eight points of slashing damage. <laughs> oh, boy. How you looking? You good? <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. Okay. Good dog. We'll make All it right. out. Okay. We're back up to the top. Huata, you are up. I will just remind you all of like the scene that you have here. Uh, there is a massive Jabberwock, a, a dragon, just a very strange looking dragon that you're interacting with. And 25 feet behind you, you can see uh, both of the Shatterkai owners of the carnival kind of holding back in the darkness, watching what's going on. So what would you like to do? I, I don't want to attack because he's going to attack me. I don't want to attack <laughs> <laughs> I'm hiding behind you. I'm hiding behind my big friend. And I think I just want to stay hidden. I don't want to. I don't want to attack. Him. Oh, my gosh. I just don't. Okay. Uh, I just don't. I don't want to attack him. Okay. Can you, like, sneak around to the dudes or something? Like, anything? Like, Mr. Sneaky Sneak? Can we, do, can we have no, any help? I'm okay with that. I can sneak around maybe, like, the perimeter. And start making my way towards our two friends over there. I'm mm -hmm. okay with that, because then I'm away. I'm away from the action, but I'm kind of creeping up to maybe see if they're talking about something. I mean, uh, you uh, go ahead and make a stealth check for me. See if you can like sidle up to them unnoticed. Oh, that's a good one. That's Did you roll with advantage? Yeah. Okay, I'm just double yeah. check. You rolled twice. <laughs> <laughs> roll one more time, just in case you roll a crit. Second was a 13. We don't need Okay, it. okay. The 22 is perfect. I just wanted to double check for you. So yeah, you're able to like slide over and you hear them speaking. What languages do you speak? Huata. I really hope you speak Elven. This is, this is just gonna, as a water elf, if you don't speak Elven, we have a problem. <laughs> right? We have a problem. There's a chance. There is. That's that's the worst part. There's always a chance he doesn't. Yeah, Wada. If you look at the far left at the bottom, uh, Aquan, mm -hmm. common, mm -hmm. elvish, oh, goblin. And okay. You did it. You did it, buddy. You speak the language, and you hear Thank him you. speaking in low tones, as uh, the te like the tenor of it is interested but not worried. They don't seem to be afraid of losing this fight, but they also aren't aware that you're over on the side. And they're just kind of talking back and forth between themselves. Like, oh, normally we wouldn't want to waste bringing the Jabberwock out, but if this keeps them busy, we can add four more strong backs to the witch light. So let them fight. <laughs> We'll take more from the time than we did before. They will be so pleased with us when they see what we have done. When we finally go home. 
and that's like what you overhear. You, by all means, if you want to like talk to them, feel free to do so. I'm not trying to tell you what to do, I'm just letting you know that like, you've done a lot of intel, but I don't want to rob you of feeling like you have any volition if you want to act in this moment. I don't know if I want to act, because then if I say something, they'll know I'm there. I kind of like staying in the shadows right here. Cool. Very cool. Shadows for me. No one knows I'm here. No one knows. They don't know. All right. Um, so now the Jabberwock is up, and it sees all three of you, and it's going to make an attack for each of you. Oh, no. A bite for e uh, for, yeah. Let's do a bite for Donnie and Stick and a tail attack, or a claw attack for Jenny. Let's see, it's not gonna hit. Miss on Donnie, hit on Stick, and a hit on Jenny. Oh, this is great. Boop, boop, boop. Uh, so, <laughs> Stick, you're going to take 16 points of piercing damage. Jenny, you take 10 points of slashing damage. Have to five. Cool. And, oh yeah, we've got to do it. We got to do it. We got to see it. No, no, we ain't got to see nothing. No, we, sh we for it. sure do. No. And I, I need no. all hey. three of you to make a dexterity saving throw. Do I see it coming? Yes, yes you do. As uh, its giant white eyes begin to like simmer and this like piercing fiery gaze shoots out from it. 22. Makes it. Do we have advantage on this? Why would you have, I have advantage? A, you know what? I, I said curious. what I said. She aids you. You have. You all have advantage oh, yeah. on this. Yeah, we do. Hey, it's coming. We do like that. So, let's see. Uh, does 19 do it? Uh, okay. 19 17. just does it. Oh. And an 18, uh, 17 doesn't make it. The DC is 18. Of course it doesn't. So you're gonna take 31 points of fire damage, Donnie. I'm oh. dead. And the other two of you are gonna take 15. Oh! Is there nothing that I, let me look through mine. What could you nothing do? Nothing to save me? Can I use my inspiration to make him make, re-roll his saving throw, please? Would that help you at all? Well, I can use mine. All? I, can, I can use mine. Use I will, yours! I yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, but I'm you, I'm, just gonna I'm let looking yourself to see die. I'm looking to see if there's something that I can do before I burn it. Gotcha. Okay, respect. That's it. I can't. Okay, so I'll use I'll... 16. I'm dead. And you see your turtle monk goes down. Loses consciousness. I I um, give him my hand. Oh yeah, right. Okay. Do I All right, want I... to allow this? Sure. You can give him your inspiration. I'll get, I'll get it back, Bro, baby. A... Jenny's Jenny's confident. We'll see. We're at the end back. of our game. Maybe I just kill you and move on with my day. Concern. That, that could oh, happen too. But that's a thing Jenny up, is willing man. to take. Oh, oh my god! Seven gosh, plus three. That's ten. You're killing me, I told me, you not smalls. to give it to me. I said, you can I give him my thing. inspiration too? You absolutely Guys. can. Do Guys. it. Roll that. Do it. This is terrible ideas, guys. Yeah. There you go, seven. Oh my God. Why are you keep giving me this? I said, stop doing this. <laughs> hey, does I'm anyone have their inspiration well. left? I do, but I'm not going to use it. Because I'm going to help, him. all right? Sure. You're not dead. You're down, right? You're, You're down. down. And my yeah, question for you in this moment is what regret flashes across your mind as your head hits the ground and you lose consciousness, Donnie? While I was traveling, maybe three to four years ago, there was a loot player in a small inn that I met and we ended up hitting it off quite nice, but the road is, is my life and I knew I just wouldn't be good for her. and. I wish I would have stayed. I just wish I would have stayed. <laughs> and that yeah. little bit of dust that kicks up that reminds you of the road that you chose in that moment is the last thing you see. 
as your consciousness leaves you. Okay. Belinda, I'm sorry. Belinda! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. Jenny, you're up. I look over at Donnie, and I was just like, ah, uh, ah. Uh, you know what? We got to do this going down a blaze of glory. That's what Tibbledore Plimp would do, baby. We coming at you real hot. And I'm still in a rage, but now it's even worse, right? Because mm. uh, now we've lost a companion on the way. And so there's things I want to do. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. So just let me know. So we're going to do Absolutely. two attacks. Love it. Uh, and I 19 will... in a okay. two. <laughs> The 19 absolutely hits. Don't forget that, like, even though Donnie's down, that aid is still up and will stay into effect until so, the bottom of the round. So you're attacking that was, with that was, advantage. <gasps> yeah, that was the... Yeah. So I rolled a 19 did, and a the, 2. The inspiration save, should I have had advantage roll? on those? No, those are usually just a single okay, okay, extra okay, reroll. Okay. <laughs> but I, res so dead, I respect the drip. That's a good ask. <laughs> Uh, I, and one thing I did forget to mention in my uh, absolute delight and enthusiasm to knock you unconscious is that as that like fiery gaze happened once uh, the Jabberwock blinks and its eyes return to just the piercing white headlight beams from its eyes, you see that like the damage that you've done to it begins to fill with white light as it regenerates and takes health back. Okay, now you're up. I like my my well, dragon. You should have kept so, that. 19 will you Hits. Will, so I rolled a 19 and a 2. So thank goodness yep. for that. And that's also a crit for me. You so, crit on a 19, absolutely. Yep. Um can I call shot for the eye? I love that. Yes. So take cool. a negative 5 to your attack roll. I I still would have crit on a 19. Oh, yeah, I'll give it to you. Because of the bib. Like because of the bib. So, uh... I'll let this one it. go, because I like, I like what we're doing here. She said I killed one of you. <laughs> I got to do a little murder, so I'm going to let you have this eye shot as a treat. 16, 16 plus 5, 21 for the first attack. Beautiful. Do do a shatter an eye or anything, or is that it doesn't just shatter because like... it's fleshy? But you absolutely put it out as you like strike into it with your sword, and it cuts in. And that slashing damage, you actually see like molten light, like if you kind of smush uh, like a firefly, pours out from the socket. It's jellied, it's viscous, and it pours down your blade and drips onto the ground as you knock one of its eyes out. But Can it's I do another? Second attack, aim for the other eye, called shot. If you're gonna call the negative. shot, you have to take a penalty up top. No, 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 so I'll, ta I'll take the negative five for that. Yeah, I'm cool, cool, cool. But I still get the advantage because of the aid, correct? Yes. All right, 19 and a two again. If you, I if you don't see believe it, I'll you. I, you're I'm a monster <laughs> and a liar. You don't have to move your <laughs> camera. I'm going to get yelled at. <laughs> you're a monster you're and a liar. Come up here. 19. All right. All right. I am, you take I am my precious the... boy's eyes from me. Yep. Uh... Give me that damage. Well, don't I'm forget like... to double the dice. Uh... Now your frame's all janky. Sorry, I made you prove oh, okay. it. I'm not sorry. Yeah, that's not see all your. Face. No, you're not. You're never sorry. You're DM. You get. I've I totally never get been it. sorry ever. Ever. Uh, twenty points of damage on that. Oh, you put out the other eye. Why don't you describe for me what it looks like as you blind the Jabberwock in two strikes? So I, I jump up and I do this big leaping stab in the eye, and then I pretend like I'm really cool with the blade like my hero would do, the point, and then I come from behind and stab the other eye, so I'm like just standing on its nose. Amazing. Can I use my bonus action? Because I get to It doesn't really have a armor. nose, but I, I get it. Go ahead, what? Yeah, bonus like on action? the snout area. Yeah. Uh, can I like back Sinton the dragon and try to slide down the tail to get to the two dudes? 
I hate this. Make an acrobatics check. I cannot deny you anything. Uh, 14 plus 6, synthetic 20. I will absolutely give it to you on a dirty 20. Go ahead. And you then, slide down, you land in front of them. And then 8 points of damage from the armor. <laughs> Excellent. So Amazing. I'm just sliding down, baby. It's like a water slide. Hold yourself together. Come in hot. We're, we're, don't, don't reach down because you're not going to have any arms by the end of it. So I'm just holding my body and so sliding down to get to them. Amazing. Okay, you arrive at the bottom. I have always treated uh, speaking as a free action if you want to talk to them. If not, hey. you don't have to. I'll, I'll just... Um... <laughs> I'm probably not the character to talk with my negative no. charisma. Um, yeah, give me that like, nine charisma. Let's have a conversation. Bam, slide down the back, land, be like, we need to talk. I have something that belongs to you. You have something that belongs to me. Let's make this trade in this fight so we can get the fudge cake out of here, baby. The bigger of the two Shatterkai in this like immaculate plaid suit in like muted orange and yellow and green and red steps forward and he kind of like takes off his bowler hat. So what do you have of mine? trade. I'll pull out the stick from my chest while still holding my great sword. And the sword is actually bigger than me. Can I do like a double grab with the ticket and the wand? Sure. I love that for you. And you hold them out. And the other Shatterkai, who's in this like red and white Harlequin out, uh, outfit, like slings forward and just kind of, <laughs> no, those are, those are done deals. What new do you have to trade? You took its eye. It will take your friend. I swing the sword in my hand and present them my great sword plus one. They both like scramble forward to you. And I and, and I pull it back a little bit, like like hold on, a deal's they a deal. They get close, but they don't like they respect what you're doing there. You actually see like a little glimmer of understanding. Precious to you. Yes. A battle master. It can be replaced, but not not easily. The safety of all my friends in my action figure. <laughs> Acceptable. Do we agree? All and... of my friends. And I say all of my friends and I motion to Yeah, don't don't mess with Johnny, fate talk. Who's on the ground. <laughs> yes, yes, you stated. The one on the ground is okay. a fair trade, the eyes for a life. So you leave him with us. We let you two go. And a third firework takes off overhead. Oh, no, 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 no. I said my friends. We clarify okay. those two. Why? Fine. OK. A deal, a perfect deal. And uh, the smaller of the two in the Harlequin outfit reaches out and grabs the sword and pulls it away from you. At the same time, the larger of the two, Shatterkai, Mr. Witch, presents you with your figure pristine, exactly as you remember. And a swirl, a dissipating like poof of magic. This thing they were not carrying, but they summoned because they knew, they knew who you were the entire time. But a deal is a deal. You have safe passage out, but not much time. You should run. And the Jabberwock backs away and it reaches one long fingered claw over Donnie's body and pulls it back. It sees nothing, blinded. But even now, you can see the slow process of regeneration is bringing its eyesight back. And both Mr. Witch and Mr. Light gesture in the direction of the exit on the far side of the Witch Light Carnival. So, Wada, Stick, and Jenny, will you leave? We go in. They said we only got one firework left. I don't know how much time that is. And I like fail. Jenny turns and runs <laughs> and disappears. You still managed to do it. You still <laughs> managed to do it. No matter what. Jenny turns and runs and disappears into the darkness. Wada, what do you do? I have a water toe now. So I haven't sprinted for quite some time. I sprint right towards that exit. Wada you, turns and disappears. Stick. Nice meeting you. He turns and disappears into the darkness. Stick. What do you do? Dick takes off his sunglasses. I used to be a lone wolf, but Donnie's taught me that I don't need to be alone. 
You know not what forever. That is. And ditching your friends is not cool. <laughs> <laughs> so he is not going to turn and run. I guess uh, Jenne did one last favor for the both of us by blinding the Jabberwock. And he is going to healing word, uh, Donnie. I will do my biggest heal possible. Beautiful. So that'll get him up with uh, 12 HP. <laughs> You are awake and under the body of the Jabberwock that's perched on top of you. That's a bonus action. It would be really cool if I turned into a giant bat and flew at the two elves. Okay. I'm going to say, I don't speak, I don't speak Elven, but I speak Sylvan. Mr. Witch and Mr. Light, you're gonna pay what you owe, and I'm just gonna fly. But I can't do anything else, so I'm just gonna fly at their direction. And they turn and regard you and smile. And you see as it's uh, the Jabberwock's massive lashing tail is going to come and attempt to swat you out of the sky. This thing has legendary actions. And if you want to be in a fight, we can stay in a fight. I'm not worried. We'll stay in a fight. I'm not a coward. I'm not scared okay. of you. Oh, You're not you my real mom. <laughs> uh, 15 points of bludgeoning damage. And I need you okay. to make a DC 18 strength saving throw. 19. It turns so the like serrated edge of its tail tries to catch you and slam you down into the ground, and you are able to slip away just in time. Oof. Donnie. As you wake up on the ground, you see a puddle of water has collected near your face, and you see a little ripple as if someone breathed on it, and you hear Palash's voice, and she just says, stay. She signed your shell. I hear wedding bells as I'm running away. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stay, but I have to fight to make sure my friend can leave. He stayed for me. I have to get him out of here. That little pool, like, freezes in the ripple of her last words and then goes to icy shards as the water underneath this entire, like, the entire Jabberwock, like, sat down into, like, the wetness that was being pulled around as she was giving you her aid as it frosts over and sticks the Jabberwock to the ground, your next attack at a plus five. Yes. I'm, I'm stuck under this. With the freezing, I couldn't, I still can't get out. You're able, if you want to spend your, like, half of your movement, you can get up and out from under it. Because it was, like, guarding you because it thought you were a corpse. It wasn't, like, yeah. holding you. I'm getting out. Mm -hmm. And I'm, how far away am I from the two? Uh, they're on the other figures. side of the full Jabberwock, so probably at 15 feet. Can I? <laughs> get out from underneath, half your run movement. up on top. Okay, half my movement, and I'm gonna run up on top, and once I get to the crest, I'm gonna jump, and I'm gonna go into my shell, and I'm diving at the two guys. It's like, yes! yeah! Oh, yeah, no, I'm not gonna let you not Let's do go. that, that's insane. And, I, and I'm, and I, and I'm Portal screaming, pal. get out of here, get out of here, so he knows I got this, just leave me. <laughs> leave me! Make your attack roll. So that's 15 plus six, 21. So are they still holding the greatsword? Actually, they are. I see this huge bat. I know it's him. I know it's my friend. I'm going to do my deal, go towards the one who's holding the great sword, because I'm thinking if he can swoop by and pick it up and get out, she can still have her sword. May as well get out with everything that we came in with. Why are you being so nice? Why are you <laughs> because being I'm so gonna nice? stay with I my girl, you. dude. I've been traveling for years, and what I do as a as a portal is I find my mate, we build a castle, we have our kids, our kids stay there till they can grow up, and I I'm I'm done traveling, dude. I'm gonna listen this time. How are you Stay. gonna have kids? Like, you guys, get out. Get the no! sword and get out. You see all of this happening. I will allow it to happen if stick. What do you do in this moment as you see all of this kind of coming together? You see your friend flinging himself, making an opening for you. I'm gonna honor his last request. And if I can, I'll swoop in like a bat. Mm -hmm. grab the sword and take off into the night sky, which would be really cool. <laughs> Give me an athletics check. Okay, I can do that. That's possible. I got an ad 20. <laughs> oh! Yes. Save me, save me. <laughs> so describe this beautiful swoop as you like grab the sword and get up and away. So he never stopped as he was charging towards the two uh, bad guys. And he kind of just does like a a very elegant swoop around. He looks Donnie in the eyes as if to check, are you sure? 
and then he's going to grab the sword with his feet and then flap away like a dark angel. <laughs> and Donnie, you watch your friend disappear into the darkness faster than you know your keen vision should have allowed it to happen, but they have all made themselves scarce out and away. And just as the last, somehow you all missed the fourth one, that fifth, firework bursts in the sky. You see a little silhouette of a bat disappearing into the night. And Donnie, you stay and the rest of you keep your gifts, keep the things that you've found and remember the things that you've lost. And I would love to do an epilogue and know where you are all later, but that's not how the Fae work. They don't give tidy endings to things. They just stop and they wait, and they return. So while this story is closed, it is not over. And we'll see what happens in another eight years at the Witchlight Carnival. And that's where we'll end. Yeah! I feel like Yay! I got class. This is so much fun. It's that okay. was so good. This, the only reason that I tried, I wanted to make sure you got saved because I decided that I was gonna be chaotic good at the beginning oh. of this. Oh. But let me back it up and say I'm so incredibly disappointed in your negotiating skills, Ember. <laughs> an, an, an unreal amount. Because you or said that an I was, an an I was an a fair spare for my life. Friends. And then, then you let them say that it was fair when you know this dragon regenerates. My life doesn't regenerate. And you left that on the <laughs> table. And then you took well, you your were... item, not bargain for everybody's item. Just bargain for everybody's <laughs> stuff. I just... I just, always do uh, this every game well, we play. Just so figure it by heart. Punk, so, always just so, make your you, stuff and then you leave. <laughs> Why? It's so easy. Just say it regenerates. So let me get my dead friend too. And we all would have got out. Um, so I, I, I want to tell you guys that my wisdom is an 11. So I don't know any better. But Oop. you as a human. You as Oop. a human. Oop. You Oopsie. It's called it's called role play. I'm a chaotic neutral character. It's role play, baby. I'm, but it seems your role play always has 900 You're points in selfishness. <laughs> Amazing. All right. I can well, blame it on the alignment, baby. That's what we do. Look, that's how don't we be live. mad because y'all got outplayed again. And I survived with all the stuff that needs to happen. Don't she be literally mad. She did not lose. Perfect run. She I did lose. not lose. You know what? And I you had a second That's great sword too, so it's totally fine. It next, was normal, next, but I have a sword to play. fight with. I'm just saying. <laughs> Next game we play, we're just gonna go ahead and just uh, let's just assume sure. that's what's gonna happen. Right. Yeah. yeah. What? A media what? What? <laughs> I made a tank. That is it. I made a dumb you tank. You keep secrets from us. You finished the games without saving everybody. You want to know what my secret was? I had a irrational fear of rust monsters. And the fear that I could never live up to my hero's expectations. Like, yeah. that, those were my two fears. My secret was, I like, you guys don't even know what a rust monster is. But I do. Don't, don't. I, I know you do. It's but terrifying. I do know that your hero probably would have saved his friend. Yeah. But that's, that's okay. Yeah, your hero wouldn't have been. I thought you were dead. Sweet. Uh, so thank you so much, you four are excellent storytellers, and this was so much fun. I hope you guys had a really good time. Um, yeah, let's roll some dice again soon sometime, but that's it for us over here at the Chaos Carnival. So Thank goodbye. you so much for being our DM. You were fantastic. Yeah, thank oh, you. Thanks. So much. God, give it up one time, everybody. <laughs>